Everybody's in on it today. Hi, everyone. Welcome uh, back to the program. My name is Dean, and we live in crazy, crazy times with crazy, crazy losers. And uh, we all have to put it together on a daily basis. We've been happy to do it today. Uh, and uh, please welcome to the program uh, my friends, Lachlan Cross, 95.7 Cruise FM in Edmonton. Uh, you can get him at Lachlan Cross on Twitter. Same thing, Ryan Lindley at Ryan Lindley on Twitter from the Sheeple Shepherd podcast. Um, the heart and soul of the operation, really. Kareem Assad at Karima Rules on Twitter. And please welcome a br- brand new guest. Kareem is in Ottawa, so we're going to cover Ottawa today because we got all that bullshit to deal with. And things are getting a little hinky this weekend, so we'll look ahead. And then we'll have a little bit of a, a normal conversation uh, with a lovely young lady. Please welcome to the program, broadcaster and now podcaster, uh, Marianne Iveson, ladies and gentlemen. She's new. She's new, so let's give her a hand. Let's welcome her with one of these. And she's fucking having a terrible week. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Is that right? How was the intro? Am I? Or did I nail it? Uh, at MA on the air is where you can find uh, Marianne. Uh, really happy you're here. How's your week been? Good. Um, hasn't. Um, that's really that's super hard to answer. Um, yeah. Ooh, uh, it's. I even know where to start with this. Other than it's been an emotional roller coaster. Is there's been a lot of laughing. There's been um, a lot of crying. Um, There's been a lot of like anxiety and shaking and I'm struggling a lot. In fact, what you can see behind me is that I'm about to leave. The the second the show is done, Mm -hmm. I'm leaving my home in Lower Town here in Ottawa because I'm terrified. Mm. Um, You you say terrified, but like you, how far are you from the white supremacist rally? Uh, So I've been saying... (laughs) So I've been saying this to my friends and my family. I said, if you told me a week ago that I would have to or want to leave my home because there's white supremacists down the road who've occupied the capital in the city that I love, I would have never believed you in a million years. <laughs> you would have done one of these. Nah, you're crazy. You crazy. Now, that- Honestly, yeah, my reality is completely, and you know, Kareem is seeing it firsthand, um, fr- firsthand. But so I'm about just to give you some perspective of where I am. Yeah. So I'm in Lower Town. I'm about a kilometer away from Parliament Hill. I'm close to King Edward. Oh. So, so last weekend was really difficult because the trucks were coming in from the bridge off Quebec, and it was relentless, nonstop honking all weekend. The, uh, the horns was- were being honked on the way into town too, Marianne. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way down. There was, I, I got a few videos of them just laying on the horn for a good minute or two straight. Um, and then there's also protesters right there on King Edward, too. Uh, so I live right next to King Edward, and I'm hearing the honking. And um, this week's been a little bit more quiet, but I've been nothing but incredibly deep into Twitter. I've been out for walks. I've seen the trucks and the flags and the swastikas and everything around my neighborhood. And it's the most surreal experience that I don't even know how to describe it other than it's extremely anxiety inducing. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. when people in Ottawa, because we've been seeing a lot of this um, interviews and and, and quick little snippets and things like that, when um, they started using the term occupation, that that's not that's not an exaggeration. That isn't a, uh, that isn't a way of exaggerating it to make a point. You guys feel occupied. It's this weird, it's this weird balance, I think, because yes, there are, there are videos and I know this is happening and I know Kareem is going to say it too, that they're barbecuing and they're, there's a lot of camaraderie <laughs> between them. And they're are, they having, are they having a, they're grilling out there already? Are those they're guys playing, grilling? They're playing Billy hockey. Street they're Fest. Playing hockey. They're yeah. having... They got road hockey going out there too. I saw I saw that there was road Shitty. hockey at some point too. Um, they have it planned. And... I don't know. I haven't seen it happen yet. I saw yeah. a soccer ball out today. Oh, did you? Oh. Yeah, they're having a good old time. Um so I'm I'm having a hard time splitting the fact that there's camaraderie down there, but the fact that they've settled in and the structure that they built right yeah. next to the Rideau Canal is my favorite comedic relief of the week because the fact that they were allowed to i'm so i'm so worked up about this the fact that they were allowed and they got the lumber in there and they were able to build the structure and get away with it 
yeah. means that they have occupied. They, I, I believe that occupation is a proper word for it. Mm -hmm. Back to your original question. Yes. Gee, can I tell a quick story about the, a similar? Group? Yeah, I, yeah, and I want to get back to the structure because Karima yeah. actually tweeted a couple of pictures. They literally built a house there. Like, well, this like this ties into craziness. the structure. This ties into yeah. the structure. There, when I was get in radio school a hundred years ago, I worked at the Pan Pacific Hotel, and they used to host these um, conventions all the time. And the truckers, uh, lumber, something forestry convention came in, and they just they take over Vancouver and this hotel, and their trucks are everywhere, and and uh, and they they party like this is a weekend they let loose, say, eh? and um, they had this one. Uh, like family, uh, two families of truckers, and they ordered a room together, and they thought the rooms connected, and it, they didn't, and they were like, "I'm sorry, we're kind of full. You're you're stuck. You'll have to. You're right next to each other." So the guy went down to his the cab of his truck, and he took a, a chainsaw out, went upstairs, Come and on. cut a hole. <laughs> Come on, yeah. Did the deposit cover that? I wonder. <laughs> I <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh made a God. hole in so the that wall. they could walk back and forth with the two rooms. I oh. kid you not. They they mm. they they think differently. But this, these guys aren't group. truckers. That's the thing. Is it that, that's and, and, yeah. and you know what? It was funny because David Moskrop, anybody know who David Moskrop is, he's a yeah. writer, funny guy, an academic, really cool, center of the road dude. Um, he tweeted today and he's like, Don't call it a fucking protest, it's an occupation. Don't call these people fucking truckers. They're degenerate extremists. <laughs> like like I, I, every time someone calls this a uh, Karima, this is over to you. Every time someone calls this a trucker rally, I get really triggered and I have to like calm myself down not to go, hey, you fucking moron. It's not a trucker rally. There are no truckers, right? Like there are people with trucks and trucks are the weapon of choice because of the noise and the diesel fumes and all the other bullshit. Uh, because I don't know if you guys know this. This is warfare. Like this occupation is legitimately warfare. There's a reason that those trucks are there. It's A, the amount of noise that they can make with their air horns and B, the amount of diesel fumes are spilling out, make it impossible for canine units to actually do their job so when we talk about um you know the noise or we talk about the people these are not truckers making noise karima you know that it's an right surveying this thing for rally. yes what, what are they at this so, point so there there are some truckers right but everyone i've spoken to and, and to be fair it's been maybe half a dozen people in vehicles who I've had extended conversations with, they all seem to be sort of casual trucking, right? So that's not their actual bread and butter or livelihood. It's something that they do maybe in the summer for a little bit or on the side, but it, it, they're retired. Um, so there are people with trucks. Um, and, you know, when I start and like, there's been sort of a shift in the language that I use even, and I, I try to sort of stay current with it. Um, so initially I was putting truckers in quotation marks because I wasn't confident there would be any big rigs. Um, turns out I was wrong um, and there are large trucks here. Um, but I think the language of occupation is, is pretty fitting um, given that they've expressed the intent to not leave until their demands are met. Mm-hmm. And uh, getting into those demands, first, here's the beautiful structure that they're building. What is this, Karima? Can you tell us what this is? So it's, a, it's a community kitchen. Um, it's a community Look kitchen. Look at Marianne. Marianne is dying laughing. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> she can't get a hold of it. You got to see this thing. It's like a lean-to built by like 12 drunks. It's fucking hilarious. But what is Remember this? What is it supposed it looks to like be? like Randy Hilliard. So, so uh, it is, yeah, it's meant work. to be like um, food. For, for people who are participating in this. And it's interesting because the concept is sort of socialist where it's come and eat what you need and donate. And if you can't afford to donate, no problem. Um, but very like obviously specific to their group, right? right. Um, they, they, there's been talk about um, feeding the homeless. Um, <laughs> I, I think in response to um, what happened with the Shepherds chili. of Good Hope, right? So a little yeah. bit of PR damage control. Mm -hmm. um, but I get the impression that really it's sort of, it's for them, right? It's for them, um, but kind of ironic given how they, you know, disparage socialism all the time. And, and I think, right. you know, so that's maybe the nugget of good in this. Um, mm -hmm. What's not so good is that 
they have taken over a public park. And and last <laughs> night I was out there um, filming this and it was it was it was quite late. Um, and this guy comes up and he's like, what are you guys doing? Like, what are you doing here? And I was like, it's public park. Like, what, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm allowed to be here. Fuck You're off. not allowed to be here. Um, but yeah. And then anyway, he just as an aside, he was wearing a hold fast toque. Um, so I just pointed to his hat and I was like, Peter Burgers. And he's like, yeah, Peter Burgers. And he's like, I'm glad you're cool. Like there's been Antifa here. And I'm like, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I said the code word. The code word is Peter, Peter Burgers. Burgers. Yay, we're friends. <laughs> um, but like point being that, you know, there is this like inescapable hypocrisy between what they preach and sort of how they act. And you know, it's freedom, not for all. Um, that much is clear. And, you know, I, I when, when I'm talking to people and they're like, well, what side are you on? It's like, you know, I'm on the side of agreeing that the pandemic, everyone is tired of it. Um, but I also like rule of law. Um, and, you know, this, I think, runs contrary to that. And it's not really peaceful in ways X, Y, Z. Um, and yeah, I get the sense that that for at least some of the participants here, um, this isn't just a war on Trudeau, um, which is, I, I think, the main objective, um, but it's also a war on the laptop class. So Ottawa is perceived to be sort of the city of bureaucrats, of people who are coddled, who can work from home, you know, who haven't had their livelihoods affected and therefore screw them. And, and that's why I think it's been so punishing um, with, with the way that they're conducting themselves. You mean educated, successful people? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, you know, I, I, I know you, I don't want to be classist about it. Me, no, I, so. I, I don't, I don't want to be classist about it because, you know, I would not be able to build a community kitchen if you gave me a hundred years, let alone, you know, in two days. Right. So different skill sets and, you know, th there are inherent injustices within capitalism, right? Mm -hmm. So education and like, you know, that that's just, it's, it's a crummy aspect of how our society works. But e there is a sense of being sort of anti, whatever is perceived as being elite. Um, and in this case, I think it's Ottawa residents, even though, um, you know, we know that the city is much more than bureaucrats and students. Mm -hmm. So this group isn't going to Starbucks and probably misses Robin's Donuts. Great point. Bacon yeah. and Eggers. These guys. Yeah. These are, are Tim Hortons, salt of the earth. Yeah. yeah. yeah Coffee yeah. time. And there's people. no veggies at that kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> like it's there just, were actually it's little veggie bags. There were what? Little there was a veggie bags. tray? <laughs> are you serious? Untouched. Bags, yeah. Come on. Untouched and the dip was gone. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's funny. for their bread. It's funny that Karima is like, oh, it's a really cute kitchen, even though it's on crown land. And because uh, the other day she's she tweeted a picture of like this buffet the truckers put out that literally looked like some type of like birthing class video. And, <laughs> and she was like, Do you, you know, the cupcakes like he was like, uh, yeah, I won't be eating here. So you're like you, 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 you're pointing it out, but then you're also being like, it's like you're riding this really nice little wave of like, hey, listen, Dean, I just don't want to get my ass kicked. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who's yeah. watching your show. I'd be, I'd be willing to bet if there has been violence, it was a yeah. fight between two guys that were trying to decide who was the better griller. Like I'm sure they have heavy stuff. duty like that grills, violence though, is real. So this, oh, this kitchen is I, not a joke. I will tell you this: there is no better like you see Joe Rogan do it all the time. There is no better barbecuer than a redneck. I will say that it, it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking it's a big thing. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Listen, one of the things that 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 we're kind of tracking and and we talked about it over the past couple of days, but the very heavy QAnon presence. Now, Karima, you followed this woman and and, and Marianne, you'll like this because you asked me about her prior to the actually coming on. Ramona Dula, Ramona Dula. Um, this is a very interesting human being. Uh, have you guys heard of this woman, Ramona Dula? What's her nickname? She, uh, the Queen of Canada, the yeah. Queen of QAnon, mm -hmm. QAnon um, yeah. Q yeah. Queen or something, yeah, QAnon yeah, the Queen, Ramona that's Dadula, heard, yeah. that's her name. Um, so I, I did some research into Ramona uh, Dadula. What do you know about her, Karima? First of all, before we get to the videos of her burning the Canadian flag on Parliament grounds. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, you know what? Stay Marianne. tuned, folks. I enjoy Marianne. <laughs> Sorry, Marianne. <laughs> it's just so That's crazy. I saw her, by the way, was her was a picture. It was a lighter of her under the Canadian flag. That's how yeah. I got introduced to her. Sorry. Oh, uh, that was your first time, like, finding out that Ramona Dadula yeah, exists? By the way, yeah. <laughs> if you're ever burning a flag, put a little gas on it so it goes up quicker. Yeah, it was There's a terrible job. There's so much fuel and diesel here. Like, this was yeah. missed opportunities. <laughs> um, but, yeah, That's Ramona. the longest it... flag burning I've ever seen. <laughs> I know. Well, they're all useless. Sorry, Karima, go ahead. Um, so melted. she she's from Victoria, BC, to my understanding, and she has declared herself the Queen of Canada. And, you know, she spouts a lot of sovereign citizenship, sort of pseudo-legal garbage. Free land um, shit, postman shit. Yeah, like Canada yeah. is a corporation and none of this is real. And I have sent <laughs> Justin Trudeau a memo that he is no longer, he's fired, but he's still there. So I'm sending him <laughs> another memo. And like, they're all about kind of the, the cease and desist yeah, and notice yeah. of liability and just totally meaningless I bet documents. You she doesn't pay rent either. <laughs> but <laughs> what's less funny about her is that she has a significant yes. following, like tens of thousands, like I think 70 or 80,000 followers. That's what got me yesterday and, was your video of yep. how many people were standing around with the yep. flags, like with that logo. On it's they're, like, where the fuck are earnest. they getting this from? They are there in earnest, like for real. And, wow. and she tells her followers very disturbing things, um, most notably, and then I talked about this a little bit yesterday, um, encouraging people um, to, to murder anyone who vaccinates children. Yeah, so she was one. called in by the RCMP. Um, I don't know what came of that because here she is in Ottawa giving a not speech, much. not even with a microphone. <laughs> like it was a megaphone that they didn't know how to use. Like she was standing on the centennial flame, um, which is off. Otherwise, maybe she could have used that to burn the flag. Um, <laughs> well, she looked pretty short, so she had to get pretty... She, she's, she's not that physically imposing. <laughs> she's certainly not charismatic or eloquent or really... She's a fucking idiot. You know what she is? She's a mentally insane person who's been on several psychiatric holds against her yeah. will because she's fucking crazy. And the fucked up part, to Karima's point, are all the fucking crazies that believe she's the queen of Canada. It's crazy how many people were there. Watch yeah. this video and the seriousness of her posse. And I'm pretty sure they spell posse with a U. But watch, watch this video of these guys uh, walking her up to the stage. This is like, it's the weird. And she's legitimately just a crazy person who's been under psychiatric evaluation and psychiatric watch for like most of her adult life because yeah. she's fucked in the head. But watch this. So there you go. Uh, that is uh, Ramona. As We're in trouble, everybody. We're like, I, have, I, have a I have a question. Concerned? Yeah. Marianne, go ahead. Okay, so if there's this woman who um, has been known for saying that she wanted people who said children should be, people who vaccinate children should be murdered, right? That's what shot, she said. Actually, Sh shot, shot, right? Yeah, yeah. Shot, okay. Yeah. Um, so why is she, why was she allowed to go t on to Parliament Hill? I don't have an answer I get for you. The, I get the sense that... Um, people who aren't following this movement would have no clue who she is. And rightly so, because her sort of network or community is sub, sub, sub level, right? Um, and, you know, she's not someone who we're going to see on, on the news um, because she is a nobody. But she's a nobody with a following. And I think that there is an underappreciation for the seriousness of, where we find ourselves and the fact that there are hundreds, thousands of people who are brainwashed into cult-like 
mentality. And I think QAnon is sort of the most obvious cult um, in this movement. And there are people who are part of the, the convoy who would disavow this and say, well, they're not with us. They're just here with us. Um, there. So they're with us. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think that I think that there's just a lack of understanding and I don't know whose job or responsibility it is um, to kind of be aware of this. But, you know, there's there's gaps, obviously, in, in enforcement. And these people are delusional fucks. Like, look at the dude uh, standing next to her. That's one of Secret her security service? guys. She has no. She's got like security, and these people believe she is like talking to Jesus Christ all the time. And she is might like a be. conduit. I mean, I, don't, I doubt it. Uh, and a, toast. Con, a conduit to uh, to QAnon and a con uh, a conduit to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So these people are like hardened, hardened cult members that are following a legitimate crazy person. And and look at the dude. Like I mean, look at the fucking fire in this guy's eyes. This it's just, is the, it's Jonestown like, I, again. I haven't been scared of anybody at this rally, Karima. But like you look at this cat, and it is on for him. Like he, the they have security around this woman. That guy does not look pleased. He is ready to punch someone if they come up to her. Like, I don't even know who did you take this video? Is this your video? It is my video. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I was with my cameraman for this. Um, so I'm not the one holding the camera. But yeah, I was a little bit concerned um, <laughs> that we were going to like trip her or something. And then, you know, mayhem would ensue. Um, and I just want to point out as well that the photo What's they the have name of the group. Her, it, it, it's QAnon, but this is Ramona Dedulo's group. Um, yeah. This yeah, I don't, I don't know that they have a a specific, like, I don't know that they go by a anything. Label. But just look how heavily yeah. filtered this photo that they're carrying of her is. I, it's just I so was going to ask you, okay, I was going to ask you, who is that? That's her. That's yeah. it's, I mean, to yeah. me, like, that's kind of the equivalent of Jenny Sky, and then you see her in real life, and it's like filters galore. <laughs> but, you know, this is, she doesn't carry around photos of herself, at least. It's like, it's like when they, it's like when they, they carry, like, the portraits of, of, Dip, like or dictators and and that's exactly what that yeah. is it's just yeah, how the is same this freedom? thing and and yeah. you know it's it's interesting because um you know part like one of her mantras is like i don't have time for politics don't talk politics but her her speech was about like intending to depose the prime minister yeah uh, she was one of the people that helped write that memorandum of understanding that was just batshit crazy. Like, have you have you guys seen this memorandum yeah. of understanding that they gave? They tried to give the government. The government's like, hey, listen, no offense, but like, we don't take memorandums of understanding from legitimately insane individuals and white supremacists. So go fuck she, yourself. She sends uh, a lot of memos. I have yeah. a question for for Marianne. So you you're broadcasting every day. What's the station? What's the so Oh, this, um, actually, I got laid off a year ago. <laughs> oh, Bell? Were you okay. with Bell? Bell, I was with Bell, yeah, yeah. Was oh, it just after it. Bell Let's Talk Day? Yeah, it was. Oh, were you one of those? <laughs> yeah. You were oh, one of the people wow. who, like, yeah. the very next day after they did this big mental week. health it thing, was, they fired you? It was a week after, but, Oh, yes. pardon me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm so sorry. So, but my, 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 but my new tool is Twitter, I would say. Uh, there's something about... And I feel so badly, and I feel for my broadcasting friends who are still on commercial radio, who are at CTV News or at any uh, outlet that they're at, and having to report on this. And I know they're doing their best to do it fairly and openly. And But now, not that I'm completely unhinged, but I'm able to actually like pick a side now. And I've, pick, I've chosen my side, and I've chosen my side that, the, side that this is absolutely nuts and insane and scary and terrifying for the residents of Ottawa. And they're terrorizing the people of Centertown with their honking and their harassment. So yeah. I, I've moved my humor and I've moved my real, real thoughts to Twitter instead. And I feel like it's kind of been an obsession the last week, but I'm actually glad that I'm not broadcasting right now on terrestrial radio. I'm glad that I have a platform for so thank you for having like giving me a platform here. Oh for sure. Do this. A pleasure. But I'm um, glad that I'm not doing terrestrial radio because that would be so hard to navigate right now. Well, well yeah, what, what are they saying about it on traditional media up there? Because like where I'm not a, and I'll tell you the truth, I don't watch the news at all. Like I never watch the news. 
I mm-hmm. never follow traditional news sources. I always go to mm-hmm. source material for my, and then I go and talk to people. That's my news, right? But what what is how is this being portrayed in Ottawa by your former yeah. employer, other mainstream people? Because we only get the outside view, right? In in Alberta, they're calling this um, a victory. <laughs> uh, and, and everybody out there thinks nothing's I, I'm not happening. Hear, I'm right? not hearing that. I, I know you're kidding, but I, I yeah, am yeah. not hearing that this is there. The the people that are um, at the border crossing um, did sort of take credit for Kenny's speech last night and yeah, thinking, yeah. oh, yeah. we got to the dill hole. He's he's loosening restrictions. Keep going, truckers. And I'm like, mm-hmm. why does that yeah, make me so that. angry? But how is this being portrayed in Ottawa, Marianne? Uh, who I follow, I follow a lot of uh, my friends at CTV Ottawa. That's mostly who I've been following and, and CFRA. But they're they're doing their best job at being fair and balanced. So this past weekend, Evan Solomon from CTV News had a beer can whipped at his head. I'm not sure if you saw yeah. that video. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But he's been doing his best. And I can see even on Twitter him um, fighting back a bit. I don't want to speak for him at all. But I know him personally, and I know the, these journalists personally, locally, who just want to tell the story. And the story this past weekend was that there was a swastika, and there were swastikas flying. And I know people are mad about that. I know people are really upset. They're like, oh, you're just like pointing the one bad apple out. No, the story is the, the swastika. The story is the white supremacy. That's that's the story. That is what's yeah. sticking out right now. The story is that you're terror, terror, terrorizing the the residents of Ottawa. Yeah, nobody wants to hear nobody wants to hear about sorry, nobody wants to hear about you showing up in Ottawa confused, not knowing why you're there to protest. And that's not a story. That's what people don't understand about media. Media is going to follow the actual story, which is people shitting on monuments, people flying racist Nazi flags. They're, they they don't care like if you have a story to tell or there's a story to follow that's what the media is going to follow and that was the story this weekend well whether they I, like it or not I think it's a little bit more involved than that Ryan and and, and, and again this is not a uh, this is not me defending mainstream media but I have seen a shift in how this thing has been presented and yeah. it's interesting that Karima on the ground has even adjusted her thought process and her language to describe what's happening in Ottawa as she has witnessed it firsthand. And and that that sort of metamorphosis is happening with with all the media outlets. And the thing is, we're lucky we're on a podcast where we can actually uh, Dean has sort of given us a platform where we can come on and go, hey, you know what, this is kind of what I think. And I might be wrong, but, you know, whatever. And we can express personal views. You work for a mainstream media outlet where they don't, they didn't hire you for your personality or your opinion. They hired you to broadcast the news. And there's still an attempt by mainstream media outlets on radio, on television, to try to be news outlets. And Mm -hmm. so they're trying to report the news. And if the news is that this is a legitimate pro a protest, then they have to present that as this is a protest. They are protesting this. Now I've seen the shift in how it's being presented on the coverage that I've seen, right? Mm -hmm. They did point out that the Terry Fox uh, statue was uh, was 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 tampered with. That the the unknown soldier monument was 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 uh, tampered with. They did per- report that there was a white, but there was still this attempt to try to figure out what this was from a from a uh, I don't know from uh, from a purpose perspective. And now it's shifting. I'm seeing. Okay, now they're reporting the anger of the Ottawa citizens. This is not necessarily a protest anymore in the eyes of people that live there. They are calling it Ottawa now is calling it an occupation. So it has shifted. And I, I started a little, bit, a little bit. But but are you seeing that uh, Karima and Marianne? Are you seeing that in the coverage there? And maybe, let's start with Karima real quick. Um, are you seeing a change in the narrative from a week ago when you got there? It's from Hey, this is a big trucker rally. Food, like no one's talking about empty shelves anymore, right? Fuck. I mean, geez, weird right. how that went away. Yeah. Um, but are you seeing a shift in how MSM is covering this uh, from, you know, this is a trucker rally to calling it what it is, which may I just point out, white guys 
It's time to exercise some of that fucking white privilege, by the way, and call this what it is. A white supremacist rally with the dumbest people in Canada at the helm. That's all this is. It's a bunch of dumb fucks that are trying to go and hold people hostage so they can make this world a little whiter and a little more Jesus-y. And it's all QAnon based and it's all coming out of the States. And we'll get to those receipts in just a second. But but what are you seeing, Kareem, about the shift that Lachlan's talking about? Because everybody has different news across the country, right? I think at some point it became impossible to maintain the narrative that this is purely a legitimate protest. Um, you know, and how can you do that when there's sort of footage, um, you know, of, of like stuff that I'm putting out, um, stuff that other Ottawa people are putting out um, of, of what is actually happening on the ground. And, you know, the, the protest itself, um, I would say, didn't really have clear objectives that were achievable, right? You can list things out in, in have a bullet point list of stuff you want, but it, it, it's not connected really to being in Ottawa. It's not connected um, to, you know, the the relevant head of power. Um, so, you know, I, I, I guess I, I push back a little bit on, on the idea that kind of this can be painted with one brush. Um, I, I think that there are overlapping ideas and ideologies. And I think at some level, if you're comfortable being shoulder to shoulder with someone who is comparing mandates to the Holocaust, right? Like you have a real problem and whether that problem is lack of historical perspective, um, whether it's, you you know, more sinister than that. Uh, And I think that it can be a little bit of both. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of people who are misled um, and, you know, who take at face value what organizers are are telling them uh, without looking into who these organizers are, what they stand for. Um, and, you know, it's really just the tail of the snake being led by the head, thinking that, oh, it's so unfair how we're being covered. And look, you know, we're cleaning up all our own garbage and we're right. shoveling the snow and we're putting down salt. And so we're not You're that bad. That Antifa guy that shit on the <laughs> Terry Fox. Down. Someone, yeah. I someone sent Antifa. me a video of like these two dudes. I think you did the video, Kareem. But someone sent me the video of these two dudes like shoveling around the tomb of the unknown soldier as opposed to the last week where they were urinating on it. Yeah. Um, and, and and they're like, what do you think of this boot liquor? They said to me, I'm like, I just see two races shoveling snow <laughs> <laughs> when they really don't need to. <laughs> yeah. Like, but that's that's uh, like the, the the effort they're going to to look like they're not exactly what they are. Marianne, to your point, I mean, it's it's unbelievable. You've been there. Have you been down to see what these people look like and how they're acting or have you stayed away from it? So Saturday, so Saturday morning, I, out of complete curiosity, I walked down and I genuinely wanted to have some conversations. So I went down to the Alexandra Bridge and I saw thousands of people on foot. It was closed at the time for traffic. Thousands of people on foot crossing over. Uh, and it was peaceful and there was children. And one of my favorites was this guy in a megaphone saying, welcome. Thank you for bringing your children. You are such good parents. Fuck Trudeau. <laughs> <laughs> so I and I ended up having some conversations. And although <laughs> and although I didn't fully understand what they were saying, it was a lot of freedom talk. Yeah, yeah. I, I really genuinely was trying to be compassionate, uh, compassionate and empathetic, and listen to what they had to say because there was thousands of people crossing, and I'm like, this is surreal. This is a big deal. This is serious. Maybe I should listen. Pay Actually, yeah. there. There was this woman, bless her, um, who asked me to sing the the national anthem with her as they're crossing over the border. And I said, and I'm not really com- comfortable with that. And she said, well, do you at least know the words? I'm like, yeah, I know the words to the national anthem, but I'm not going to sing with you. I'm sorry. I don't feel comfortable, but you do your thing. And I'm not exaggerating at all, but this is what she did out loud as these people are crossing with their flags and they're just so excited with their families. And she's like, Oh, Canada. <laughs> True Patriot. She needed you. She needed you. Cause you she left her out to dry. Wow. forgot the words, Marianne. That was why she was asking you to jump in. 
<laughs> I didn't know the words. So this is my experience. And then I walked down to Wellington Street. I talked to a cop. I observed it. I felt really uncomfortable. Uh, so I did walk down and observe it. And I've also been walking around the neighborhood, grabbing coffee, uh, kind of almost peeking from afar, listening to the horns. I can hear the train horn at night from my place about a kilometer away. Uh, so I've been observe. I've been observing from afar. And I've also, of course, the horns. Actually, there's an Airbnb across from my across from my place. And they were staying there last weekend. And I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be booked this weekend, too. But I'm getting out of Dodge. So um, mm-hmm. I will you should rent your place out. To- to yeah, yeah. Like right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You should do it. You Throw should it up real quick, dude. You, well, we were talking before. Your dating app's been going off like a dinger, hasn't it? Because <laughs> all these sweet men coming to town. <laughs> my, my girlfriends and I were having this conversation. Um, do you remember the guy in the Mike Myers mask? Yeah, yeah. 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 Do you remember that? So I'm you're just dating. I'm going to admit that. Yeah, we're back together. We're <laughs> you're, you're dating That's Mike Myers. Well. That's unbelievable. And you're scared of these guys? That's awesome. He's a sweetheart when he takes the mask off. I I may have very screenshotted it and yeah. made him a, and fake made a Tinder profile. Not a real one, but I screenshotted it and shared it on Twitter. Like I pretended that he made a, and his occupation was murdering. <laughs> <laughs> so is it is it like is there a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff in that right now like the the, the yeah, are dating you getting, app are you getting like, a lot of swipes are you getting a lot of hey yeah that's i like marianne that's all right let's go check that out i came to town for a good time not a long time are you getting some of that and a shower the convoy yeah. the convoy boys yeah the convoy yeah. trips yeah. um i haven't swiped at any of them but it's a lot of so my my red flag is here for the weekend <laughs> that's yeah or can you meet me down at the truck on the corner of Look for the green Peterbilt with yeah. the get off with the, the the Yosemite Sam with the guns on the mud flaps and the truck nuts. That's <laughs> where you'll find me. Flag flag What's that, Karima? What'd you swipe say? if I can use your shower or something. <laughs> <laughs> swipe, swipe if you I can come to your be, house and take a dump in your powder them room. Shower, charge him twenty five. Okay, yeah. listen, I've thought about this. I've thought about putting flyers <laughs> and Talk like just charging twenty five bucks to come, sort of use the bathroom, use the shower. Um, I really have, and. You're a terrible we'll business see. person. You're we'll a terrible see. business Karima, person. Those guys would pay a hundred dollars easy to use your shower and take a dump. <laughs> They're going in the street right now. No one's gonna pay me a hundred dollars. I was. Ju- I was Does, just is it true say. the cops took away all the shitters too? I heard that. I heard the cops took away all the shitters. And... Well, I don't know what what public toilets they're talking about. Like what? Like apparently the city of Ottawa did. Removed. The city of know. Ottawa put about a dozen of them out on the weekend. I think for it was Saturday or Sunday. For yeah, exactly. Well, but they didn't. I don't know if they maintained them because they can't get the they can't get the honey they're wagons gone. in there to pump them out. Dude, <laughs> so. they're gone. They they pulled all the all the biffies out yesterday. But didn't what did Ottawa police like? They're they're not fucking around anymore. Apparently, uh, that's what mm-hmm. I heard. Just to your point, Marianne. Yeah. Uh, did you guys watch the press conference mm-hmm. today, Karima? Yeah. What what did you get out of that, Marianne? Any comfort of them saying, "Hey, I- listen, we get it. We're going to crack down. This is bullshit." So it's actually the most comfort I've had in in a week. Uh, so when I first started to panic a little bit and realize that I have to leave for the weekend was on Wednesday when they had re- released about the firearms and potential connections to funding from the U.S. And that's and the Randy Hillier tweet also got me too. That was mm-hmm. that was beyond. Yeah, that was something. Um, so that's when I started to worry. But I, I know logically that there's deeper actions and people who are smarter than us who are trying to navigate this and don't want it to be public. But the public perception was, and the per- public perception is, that they, they're not taking care of us. So this is this is gold. So my friend um, lives down the street right next to King Edward, which is a busy street, by the way, just to, for people who don't live in Ottawa. It comes right off one of the main bridges from Quebec to Ottawa, and it's like a three or four lane um, street. So my friend Jameen lives right next door, and she, she snapped. And two of the lanes out of three lanes were blocked by trucks. So she walked into traffic and stood and blocked the third lane <laughs> and like put her hand out the truck, a truck, like a, just a pickup truck stopped and didn't do anything and didn't honk at her or anything. And the truckers, like the protesters said, what are you doing? You got to move. And she's like, nope, I'm going to stay here. And so she stayed there. They called the cops on her. And the cops came within minutes and removed my friend from the street. 
Wow. The point. There's a lot of this just just <sighs> so raging fucked. hypocrisy. It, yeah. It's I know yeah. it was for her safety. Like I understand that completely. Of course. But so back, Dean, back to your original question. So, um, so it hasn't for so public trust. I'm really worried about how it's going to go moving forward because I think that has been severely damaged um, for Ottawa residents, especially living mm -hmm. downtown. But when they finally decided and said this week from the from um, the news conference this morning, uh, it wasn't perfect by any means, but they said, well, we are taking action. We're adding over 100 um, both, you know, RCMP and police officers who will be in uniform and not in uniform. They're going to be um, patrolling the streets and the neighborhoods and cracking down. So it sounds like my understanding is it sounds like they're actually cracking down. And but I'm afraid of what's happening this weekend with the counter protesters and uh, everyone coming in and more protesters coming in and more trucks coming in. I'm afraid what's going to happen and how things are gonna clash, but it sounds like they're actually doing something, but I also feel like it's a little too late. But again, they're also doing something. So I'm I'm having a really hard time with this. Yeah, yeah, America, well, everybody sure. is right. The trust has yeah. been damaged already. Karima, what do you know about the, sorry, Locke, I just wanted to touch on what Mary Ann said. Uh, Karima's in Ottawa, at Karima Rules on Twitter. What do you know about the counter-protests this weekend? Um, and Because I, they've been given rules, like the counter-protesters apparently are <laughs> sending around rules for each other not to engage yeah. with these guys and stuff. And, you know, make sure that you wear plastic gloves and a bunch of face shields, because all of them are gross and they carry around disease and Lyme stuff like that but what do you know i'm joking what do you know about what's supposed to be uh scheduled for counter protests this weekend i don't have any specific intel um you know Playing i get Marianne's iPhone. all sorts of like dms and stuff about things that may or may not be actually transpiring um and you know i having seen what i've seen with the lone protesters uh, my hope is that people prioritize their safety and the I don't I don't know what yeah. kind of the crowd is going to look like tomorrow, um, but they're not shy about trying to instigate. And I think it will take a lot of discipline to not rise to that occasion because uh, I'm not confident um, in what the outcome of that would be and who might get in trouble for snapping or sort of fighting back, right? Um, the, so the, the, mm -hmm. the problem is, is I, I think the unintended consequence of, and, and I was going to ask Marianne if she felt like um, maybe the way this was handled by Ottawa and the Ottawa police may have been the reason why there has not been any violence but now you're dealing with the city pissed off so now you're you've got that angst so that that's the unintended consequence of it and and now you, you're probably right there is probably a lot more concern now that people are like fuck this if if, if they're not going to do anything i'm going to go show how i feel and now now you're dealing with the possibility of conflict and that that's unfortunate but uh, do you at the beginning of this were people in ottawa thankful that the police kind of just let them do their thing because there was concerns that if they had stepped in there might have been violence or is that just me speculating outside looking in i think that this weekend i think no one really knew what to expect from this. And then of course the Terry Fox stuff happened and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. So I think the weekend was a little bit of a blur and then we all kind of let it settle, settle in throughout the week and saying, they're still here. Why are they still here? Why is this allowed to happen? Why is the honking and the harassment and the racial slurs? Why is that still allowed to happen? And why are, why are they letting them push wheelbarrows of diesel fuel through and why are they allowed letting them refuel why are they letting them set up the structure so there's so many questions mm -hmm. along the like why are you letting them do this like why is this still happening and why are you letting them settle in so much to the fact that they're now it's like they're home and they feel super comfortable here and they're occupying they're, they've occupied it completely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's where the i think it's going to be a powder keg um because they were treated with such like a welcome mat rollout for them to show up now with the police pushing back that's gonna that's gonna agitate them and counter protesters at the same time this weekend Bummer. that's gonna agit well that's gonna Bummer. agitate them but in 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 you know speaking of, about 
what's going to happen now if it's going to kick off. I think this is the time it's going to kick off. So you're probably right to to haul ass out of town because I really don't see this ending well this weekend. Not with increased police pressure, not with counter protesters showing up. And I don't even like calling them counter protesters, to be honest. They're residents that are tired mm. of this. They're not protesting. Any- the people that have showed up with signs at the police station, those are counter protesters, but they're doing it for a good reason. Everybody else is just sick of it. They're just people. They're citizens. They live there. Get the like, fuck out of my house. Want to go to bed? Blue yeah. jacket. But when there, some yeah. when some asshole from like I got a neighbor that gets drunk all the time and he's in my driveway sometimes. His name and I'm one? telling him to leave. I'm not a counter protester. I'm just telling him get the fuck off my driveway. That's yeah. all these people are doing. Yeah. So um, one of the uh, great points, Rhino. One of the things that uh, that, that Kareem has shot this weekend, which kind of gives you, uh, this was one of the videos I, I pulled off. I stole it from your your feed. I Kareem Rural stole it. I've stolen all these videos from your feed. Same I'm with me. Just a, I'm just a thief. That's all I am. Just we'll a digital thief. Uh, okay, we're sharing. Good. Uh, so so um, this is this this might give you comfort. These are cops in Ottawa um that are uh karima maybe you can explain this uh, they're just a p- police liaison but right behind them there's a guy in plain clothes with a very big gun uh what did you shoot here <laughs> <laughs> so what do you have here karima we lose karima we have a, we have a ringing phone. Oh. i apologize for that but um we'll just push through um so it looks like the liaison people were I'm not sure exactly what conversation they were having, um, but I have noticed a more active presence. Um, and, you know, there are police forces from Hamilton and Peel um, who are also like just at the building behind there, the Chateau Laurier. I think that's where they're staying. Last week, there were officers from different forces as well. Um, but it just, everyone seems a bit more intense. I've seen zip ties, I've seen tasers, um, and I don't know that anything will actually be used. And I'm not really one to call for that kind of enforcement. I don't think that that's sort of, that's what we want to call. I will. I'll step out. I love a good tasering. (laughs) Especially if they shit their pants. I don't know why. If they crap themselves, it... (laughs) It just adds a certain level of humor to it for me. Well, it would just be added to the other stuff in their shorts that's been there for the whole week. It's just another layer of shit, right? That's all you'd get out of these guys. But um, I think, you know, it's funny because if you talk to, like, friends, right? You guys, and and Karima, maybe you've got better friends than me. Actually, I can probably guarantee you you have nicer friends than me. But when you talk to friends about this and you internalize it and and you put yourself in Mary Ann's shoes, right? You're, You're there for on purpose, Karima. Marianne is leaving on purpose. <clears throat> you put yourself in their <laughs> shoes. Legitimately. You put yourself in their She's shoes and you say packed. if these if these wankers were out front of my house um acting like this, I would I would hope for a very serious physical uh intervention. Like that's what I'm hoping for. And if you ask me what I'm hoping to see this weekend, am I hoping to see some ass kicking? A little bit. Yeah, I am. I, I got to be honest. I think there's a measure of resentment that is so huge here for people like you, Marianne, that it's like it's this thing I'm waiting for. It was kind of like when Donald Trump, like I'd watch CNN all the time. Go, well, today, did he lose his job today? Like I'm, I'm waiting for someone to come in and go, all right, fuck sticks enough. Let's go. This is Canada. Personal freedom ends right where your nose ends. And you've 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 destroyed the peace and quiet the liberty and the security of an entire city for an entire week. Let's start whooping some ass. To that point, I had 35, 36 different emails, DMs from people that work in the Ottawa police force that said, hey, listen, we've been told to stand down. We've been told not to interact with these guys. We've been told to just keep the peace and And keep protesters away from it. I don't know if that's the wrong move, Dean, honestly. I don't know if it is either, but I was super buoyed yesterday by the fact that like just personally getting all these notes from Ottawa cops saying, <laughs> you know, I you know I shouldn't say this, but we just want to go and kick that ass. Like we've had enough too. The our families live yeah. in this city as well. And that's why I, I, I kept jumping in when we were talking about the police. Cause I, and I understand the difference between how certain protests are handled and, and, and whether it's the left or the right or an indigenous, like I get all that. I'm just, I'm wondering if, it was done on purpose, right? And and that it didn't 
actually have anything to do with the fact that they were white, right? Like it's not hard to 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 wave that flag and it, and it should be questioned, but I, I just I felt bad for they're being they're being hauled out on the carpet for something that they might have been told to do. That was all I was saying all week, right? Well, getting to the getting to the nitty gritty of this is, uh, I wrote a piece on this this morning because, and it's just titled. I'll, I'll give you the title. It was a uh, kind of a low key title: <laughs> uh, "Fake Trucker Convoy, Nothing But Quote Canada's Dumbest Racist Co-opted by Smarter American Racist and Noted Pedophiles." Now, if <laughs> sorry, if you no. look at the individuals involved in this thing that are super QAnon people like Ramona Dadula, who yesterday, uh, by the way, not sure if you saw this, decided to light up a flag. So there she is, um, lighting up a Canadian flag on Parliament Hill, burning it poorly, too, by the way, like just a fucking low-rent flag burning, one of the worst I've ever seen. Like, one of the worst. Yeah. Um, but Two out of ten. The, sh- the reason why she's revered, and let me just kind of boil this down for you, is because this is such a huge Roots QAnon movement, and you're, you've heard stories, right? We've all heard stories about alt-right money coming in to fund this thing. Uh, just this morning, the government and had everybody sign off, all the MPs sign off a bill saying, hey, go fund me, get in here. We want to look at every single donation. We want to know where they're from, and yeah. we want to know what you're going to do to fucking figure this out, or we're going to do it for you. So there's some comfort there as well. But the, 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 the thing that isn't comforting is that these are all evangelical, delusional, crazy people that are doing the bidding of this guy. This is going to be fun. His name is Jim Watkins. Do you know who Jim Watkins is? Anybody yeah. know who Jim yeah. Watkins is? Jim Watkins He's a pig is the is a pig farmer from the States who has fled the United States and he lives in Thailand. Any guesses as to why he lives in Thailand? Um, tax haven. Child porn. <clears throat> yeah, wanted in the States for child porn. Oh, yeah. is he? I didn't a lot know of it. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and not, not only to the... Hang on, let me just get the video. Uh, ah, fuck it, forget it. Um, not only is he wanted in the States for, for pedophilia and making and distributing child pornography, he's the owner of this dark web outfit called 8chan 8chan was originally 4chan i think 4chan and he's also the guy that does all the q drops so the amazing part about this whole story did they guys like confirming that dean that he was doing the him and his son were doing the q drops jim and ron Watkins, both of them yeah okay now this this has been co-opted the whole idea has been co-opted by QAnon people in the united states largely evangelical crazies that are legitimately convinced they're stopping pedophilia legitimately like they have all been told and and how many times have you guys read this the justin trudeau is a pedophile and he runs the pedophile everybody's highway a pedophile the, according it, to these i people. was a pedophile That's last a, week a satanic thing. pedophile So um, what it is, is this group of people that weaponize that word. But the reason why they're weaponizing pedophilia is because they're legitimately trying to keep everybody away from theirs. Like this dude is the biggest. He is the king of child pornography in the world. Jim Watkins, the guy that invented Q, the guy that runs Q. And so what what it is, is is and and you'll you'll see this coming out in the next little while. I've got a phone call this afternoon with someone in Ottawa and we're going to kind of piece this together. But what this is, is alt-right craziness, and it's being kind of forced on Canada's dumbest people. And to your point, Locke, they're pawns. They're pawns yeah, who they're legitimately activated. think, they're activated pawns who legitimately think, who have been uh, groomed and cultured over the past, I don't know how many years, and they legitimately think they're doing the, God's work, and God is telling them Justin Trudeau is a pedophile, all the people in the government are pedophiles and they're all evil and they're all ghouls and they're all satanic. And their goal is to remove him, which is why you got that crazy memorandum of understanding. Right. Like, that's really the only thing that that we can point out to say, what do you guys want? That's it. And and so when when this whole thing and the dust clears, you're going to be amazed, amazed at how this right wing neo-Christian bullshit called ideology has affected all of us, like all of us. 
it uh, it is truly fucking unbelievable. I've the never QAnon seen anything like it. The thing is fascinating. It it, yeah. it really is and I think I think we're at a point right now where um I mean take take our situation out of it, take Ottawa out of it, take like whatever the amount of QAnon presence is in Ottawa, take that out of it. The the fact that we are all sort of in a position of of more distrust for our public officials based on and we're all sort of taking this information in differently and we're all uh we're all at different levels of frustration yeah uh, but you can see why their numbers are growing you could i mean you can understand it we're, we're all frustrated and we're all uh and and every time i see anybody speak kenny spoke yesterday it's just like stop talking Oh, it's just, it's just so fer- gross. it's fertile ground though. That's why it's it's it is. it's ripe. It's well, ripe because for who doesn't it. want to stop it, pedophilia, right? Like if you well, if someone came up to you and was like, "Hey, do you need to stop pedophilia?" One hundred percent of people would be like, "Yeah, you might have to go." It's not hard to convince no. people to mistrust anybody right now, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and we're all cooped up, and and we're all experiencing different. Le- I mean, I think to to a man on this podcast, we probably all know somebody a friend or a friend of a friend that has a kid that is suffering dearly from from the pandemic and and uh, uh, like uh, we're having almost weekly conversations my wife and i about people that 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 are really having a rough time right now and you can see you know from that stress from that 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 confusion about whether or not we're getting out of it how you might end up, I don't know, going down a wormhole or... And what <clears throat> what those QAnon folk are doing, when what they portray, or they say that our government is doing with the controlling and controlling, it's projection of what's happening to them from the QAnon. It's awesome. This, yeah, it's, it's, it's literally it's projection. Crazy. It's yeah. crazy. <clears throat> what did they go that far, are you seeing the Are you seeing the Jesus uh, freaky, weird uh, QAnon, QAnon shit more and more and more? Are you starting to see some of that come out, Karima? Um, there's definitely a lot of Jesus stuff. Um, it seems that everyone's favorite line from the national anthem is God, keep our land glorious and free. Um, and you know, the, the The only one they can remember. There's (laughs) elements of Q. Like I, I can't say that I'm an expert in their ideology. Um, but like the pedophilia rings, like the drinking of blood, like that kind of stuff. Um, so there's a little bit of, of that, but there's also like just a purely Christian sort of yeah. facet that's not Q related. Um, but, you know, I think it, you'd be it, surprised, Karima, if you take the time to 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 really dig into this QAnon thing, I think you would you would be shocked at how much rhetoric that you're hearing and the the stuff on the on the signs all ties to QAnon. I bet yep. you there is a lot more you're not seeing because I, I mean, I I was a little bit fascinated with this, so I kind of not not because I wanted to sign up as a, a member of Q, but <laughs> I just want to make sure I say that. Good disclaimer. Loud. Yes. I uh, I dug <laughs> into it and I've been seeing a lot of it, a, a lot of rhetoric. We see, and I it's, and it's, I think some people don't even know they're doing it. We had right. a guy on the other day this week to defend the truckers, and he dropped a couple of things, and I went, oh, that's Q. That's Q. Yeah. He might not even know, right? It's it's There's a lot of it, and it's seeped well, that's into why I, that's why this I was, conversation. I, that's why I said it the other day, Emily. I, I mean, it's in the title of my actual story about this, is Canada's dumbest racist have been co-opted by smarter American racist and noted pedophiles. Yep. Like, it doesn't isn't that the feel that we're all getting when I talk to people, Karima, in Ottawa, they're like, hey, most of these people don't even know what they're fucking doing. Like they and don't even it. know why they're here. Is that right? Are you getting that feel, too? Uh, definitely. Or their their understanding is quite shallow um, and, you know, not actually it's it's certainly not policy based. Um, and they're just here for freedom. And that is that's the most that can really be said. We want to end the mandates. Well, OK, which mandates? the ones that are provincial and they're like, well, if the federal government does it, the province will follow too. Mm, That's, that's not how it works. Well, the money comes from the federal government. Mm, There's still the constitution. Like, you know, when's the the thing that they, they swear they want to uphold. They don't understand. And they're asking for them to directly contravene 
the Constitution by having the federal government. I, I don't I don't get it. I just here's don't. the here's the great question, and this is just a practical question. Before you leave, Marianne, do you think you might head down to that structure and grab some chili from some of those guys? I hear it's delicious. Video tape. What do you think it's made out of? Oh, something they killed something. Unwashed hands. Raccoon. Um, is there a lot of raccoons in Ottawa? Oh, tons. Awesome. Have, there's actually a squirrel that comes on my balcony every day. Oh, Not anymore. Done. <laughs> I've actually that's had a hat a now. It is not awful. Yeah, uh, it's weird that you had squirrel. Um, Maybe I can turn into a war squirrel. Maybe I can like stay. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, so you're you're leaving, uh, Marianne. Mm -hmm. uh, Marianne uh, joins us. Uh, Marianne Iveson at MA on the air is where you can find her. She's uh, leaving her. She's all packed. Um, she left her bags behind her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just, hey, I as soon as we wrap this thing up, oh boy, gone. Fucking gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really want to show you that my luggage is here, but if this gets too long, I might just start looking back. <laughs> <laughs> but you, uh, you're leaving until this is over. Is tell me about your because we haven't touched on this, but tell me about like your. Sorry to put it like this, but it's a fact, right? Your mental decline over the past week. <laughs> um, my mental decline over the past week has been rough um it's mostly been filled with anxiety and waking up feeling anx anxious and shaking and obsessively checking social media like i'm a millennial so of course i'm on social media a lot anyway but twitter and just wanting to know always what's going on because it's right down the road for me and that's i feel like that comes from a, a very um deep place of human experience and wanting to feel safe so i feel like i'm just obsessively checking because i don't feel safe because it's so close uh so it's gone from the honking on the weekend and then i've been hearing phantom honking all all week as well and wondering and every time a, a horn honks outside i feel like the 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 hair in the back of my neck standing up um people are calling me and it's either laughing or it's crying uh, I've done a lot of laughing this week. I find when you are in the darkest moments, you feel like laughing or it's maybe it's manic. I'm not really sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. manic. But on, honestly, it's, it's a self, I, I yeah, self-protection. Maybe I'm catastrophizing this, but I'm, I'm afraid and I'm worried for the residents of Ottawa and what's going to happen this weekend. And I know that once I get out of downtown i'm going to feel a lot safer but i'm going to be worried about what happens this weekend so the way i packed was i packed like i'm not sure when i'm coming home i hope and i'm pretty sure i'm going to be home on monday that's the that's what i think's going to happen but i packed in a way that just in case i'm not actually i told dean before this that i'm like i packed like eight pairs of underwear like i don't even know what i don't even know what to do with. Like, that that's like day? four months for a protester <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, I, I, three I, weeks feel, that. Yeah, I feel unsafe and I feel unsteady and I feel super anxious and I feel scared and I'm ready to go. Does mm -hmm. that, Have you tried that alcohol, Marianne? I, I, this just Copious sounds amounts. like my daily, by about five o'clock, I'm like You this, just so described just, Lachlan every day at five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let yeah. me drive across the city first and then we'll see how it goes. <laughs> uh, listen, you might end up, hook up with Cream. I, I know she has stuff that makes everybody feel better and it comes or, in very green or forms. Or Mike Myers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Marianne, I want to thank you. And I want to thank you for being here today. I want to thank you for your courage and just getting on here and talking honestly about where you're from and what you're doing and the fact that this has bothered so many people so much. Stories like yours don't get told. It's like uh, my problem with everybody and everything that tells these stories for mainstream is like this isn't a tracker rally these are people that are legitimately trying to push people out of their homes and you're one of them so go get some rest have a couple cocktails and we'll talk to you soon thank you it was you. nice meeting you thank marianne you. yeah it was great yeah. meeting you it was nice to meet you it was nice to meet you and uh karima good luck this weekend and i will be following you from uh from afar <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone does uh, and Kareem Assad, of course, at Kareem Rules. Uh, please go donate to her GoFundMe. She's going to be there for a while. Uh, I, I'm going to put it in the show notes, and we'll tweet it out. Add it to Blundell or go to Kareem Rules, uh, her, her Twitter feed, and check it out. Thank you, my just, friend. Just really quick, though, Kareem, are you staying there, or are you coming to Toronto to cover this side of what's going on this weekend? No, um, I don't. 
I don't know what's actually going to happen in Toronto. Um, I'm not sure what the turnout will be. I know that there is a counter protest planned, um, but I think right now my place is in Ottawa, so I'm going to stick nice. it out here. Oh, yes, and the yes. chili should be ready in about an hour. Right? Yeah, you never know, right. right? Like the chili at the structure might be ready, and I hear they're doing some croissants. Oh. Croissants, <laughs> nice. Oh, croissant. Thanks, ladies. Great to see you. Great Road to meet you. Roadkill chili. <laughs> Mm. You've never had well. anything better. <laughs> it's all about the seasoning. You can Thanks, wear Karima. the pelts we'll when you're done. You Kareem Assad, ladies and gentlemen, Marianne Ivis, and lovely people. They were great. Aren't they? Yeah, awesome that was people. awesome. Yeah, hey, we got a, we had a couple of birds on the old sausage podcast. See today. that? Hey, look at that, Diener. Good work, brother. It yep. wasn't even intentional. No. It wasn't even, no, it wasn't one of those things that your boss used to do in radio where he'd like, okay, how many black people in the company? Can you help me count them? Because we need credit for all those black people. How many left-handed people? How many people have? Can you find me someone with lazy eye, Dean? Yeah. Can you find me someone yeah. with a lazy eye? I, I get another one Is of these rides in me. That'll be me. <laughs> we get half a point for a limp. <laughs> Anybody with a limp. Um, just to the point, I got a couple things to play, and then we're going to get to a brand new feature here called this honky of the day yeah. honky Reminded of the day about the video yeah he did he did he's like don't forget to play honky of the day dean and i'm like don't worry about it i got it covered uh but before we go just just to my my whole thing how, how jesus centric this thing is and and as someone who spent his formative years in the evangelical church and as someone who uh is what they call apostate which means I know all their tricks and their bullshit, and I know what they're doing. I can tell you this. These are not evangelical Christians. These are fucking terrorists. These are just Jesus-freaked fucking losers. Co and if you're watching yeah. this, co-opting our dumbest. You know, and, and, and they looked at Canada, and they're like, how do we get involved in those Facebook sites with all the crazies up there? And how can we affect change up there for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? And how can we save uh, everybody from Justin Trudeau, the sponsor pedophile? And how can we take over a country and, and, and assert influence? That's what's happening. That's all this mm -hmm. is. And these people are, are born again religious zealots. And to believe that stuff, you technically have to be stupid. You do like to believe it that much. No, 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 dude, dude. Religion. <laughs> is regarded by the dumb people as necessary, by smart people as useless, and by rulers as useful. That's one of the truest things you'll ever hear. These okay, people have legitimately did, been co-opted. didn't make that up. That was no. actually said uh, 300 years ago. by 2,000 yeah. years by... ago by Epictetus and okay. Seneca. Yeah, a couple right. of philosophers. But it's 100% factual. That's why this is going on. And in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see some of the greatest shit in the world. This doesn't seem very useful, though. What, religion? No, it's not useful at all. <laughs> this is protest. Useless. No, but it's, it, but it's useful for, for controlling the minds of these 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 goo head, just idiots. Dumb fucks. Like, yeah. Like and it, it's, it's dumbest. It, yeah. It's they're just, all it's racist. so gullible. Like, it, they, if you look up gullible, that's them. Mm -hmm. You know? I, I don't know. Well, and to they, the point, this think is... We're we're the ones right well, well, they we're going to hell that's, that's what we're we've in trouble been, well, they've been told been that we're dude you know yeah, how many yeah. born again weirdos have, have dm me like just wait till jesus comes back you're in big trouble i'm like well let me know when that is i'll yeah. uh, be at my house sure. watching netflix and we'll have a chat send me a google <laughs> calendar invite <laughs> If I if I send you my Google Calendar link, can you just put it in the in the calendar? Did I ever tell yourself? you my my uh, my Cub Scouts? Uh, well, hang on. Story. Just wait. Okay, Let me play, play the video, video. And then I got to tell you. This my Cub is a Scouts video story. of of uh, the rally of the other night, and they were welcoming a new. This is it. They were welcoming a new crazy in, into the uh, white supremacist rally in Ottawa. The occupation. They're welcoming a new religious white supremacist, and, and, and when they get there, they lay hands on the person and they pray for them. I'm not joking. Watch this. <laughs> By the power of Hudson Bay. By the power of your orange toque. 
What are they doing here? I, I, like, help me out they're here. They're praying for him. So in the evangelical Christian world, this is called the laying on of hands. And this is them praying for this man, putting their hands on him so that he can go forth and complete the domestic extremist agenda. <laughs> that is exactly what just happened. I'm not kidding you. Like, look at it. These people are praying to their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who they're in Ottawa to occupy an entire city on behalf of. And if Jesus was real, he'd go, get the fuck out of the city, you just, dicks. Just, hold on. Just, and the lady just, in the background yeah, holding, oh, yeah, just, holding just, the Jesus. cans of bush hold light on. waiting for him. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> loved beer, too. Okay, let me just tell you, like, honestly. Yeah. Let's say I went into work. I... This weekend, I, I, I found Jesus, and I went into work. Yeah. In Alberta, and you'd get a raise. after my shift, <laughs> I decided that I was going to convert everyone at work. Jimmy's first. Uh, I Jimmy, yeah. Uh, if, if you saw that in the office, Locke <laughs> holding <laughs> Jimmy's head <laughs> and chanting over him. What would Lord you and do? Savior you Jesus would, Christ, you would like it please. Just... You, we'd send you to the mental I'm institution. Sorry, I bro. have said this fucking for two years. <laughs> These people need to go to a mental institution. Anybody who it's... presents that kind of deleterious behavior, like literally absconded from reality, goes to fucking psych wards. Generally speaking. So I've said, that, you, I said this from. Scout. It ties into this converse, okay, conversation. Do you want some so, Cub Scout music? And is sure, there any sex yes. in this? I don't yeah, want to talk yeah. about no, it. There's if no there's sex. Some there's okay, no sex God. in it. So <laughs> when I was a pedophiles. child, I was a little out of hand, and they didn't know what no. it was. No. Me. No. <laughs> I was. And so my mother got an idea that they might send me to Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts or whatever, and that that might actually rail, rail, reel me in. Oh, right? rail you. Yes. So I go to, I get my hat and my vest and the felt tie or whatever. And they send me down to the gymnasium at Blueberry Creek Elementary School. And uh, I sit there with all the other boys and, and listen to the Cub Scout leader. And then um, it, we do a couple of activities. And then I go home and my mom, as we're walking home, my mom came to get me. She's like, well, Lachlan, how was it? And I said, it was great, mom. When the world ends, apparently 12 white horses are going to come and save us all. <laughs> Revelation. And my wife goes, or my mom goes, what did you say? I said, yeah, there's these 12 white horses. And when the yeah, end of time comes, I guess they're going to come flying in from the sky. And those that believe are going to get oh. get to ride the horses. Yeah. And my mother on a heel took me down. <laughs> walked in and flipped out on the cub scout leader because they shared the crazy good news of jesus christ and the end of the world she lost her mind yeah well wow. what happens in that bible that was that was false my, pretense that was my entire career in boy scouts or cub scouts or whatever the fuck it was <laughs> that was that was Locke's last day at boy scouts <laughs> my, my 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 i was cub scout career lasted two days and uh and my dad came down and he was like you guys are a bunch of weirdos let's get out of here and sure enough about Five five months later, my dad's like, all those guys got arrested for having sex with kids. No word of a lie. Rose Town, Saskatchewan. True story. Well, and, and low, people have our... said this. This this has been said out loud. Many comedians have said this, but I, it's true, right? If you're looking for volunteers to, to go camping with a bunch of kids that aren't yours, and the guy puts a hand up, well, that's the guy you look, want to put on a our... watch list. Our local that we had when I was growing up, because we were all in it as well from our school, it happened in our school gym. Yeah. We had a guy, then his kid was in it, and everything was good, everything was fun. The guy was totally normal, nothing weird ever happened. 20, 20 years later, I'm at my house, and a guy that I grew up with phoned me, says, "Are you? do you have a TV on? I'm like, yeah. He goes, "Turn on, and I swear to God, turn on Sally Jesse Raphael right now. I'm like, why? Scout leader. The scout leader is there dressed as a lady and telling his family that I am a woman now. And the kid yeah. that we went to scouts with was sitting on the panel of the, the like, they didn't it's know sad. why they were going. It was a setup. 
And this is, and that was one of our, that was one of our trusted scout leaders. Oh, that's okay. That's no, nothing wrong with that. But you nothing happened. No, and and, and age, nothing age. happened. Like the guy was totally fine. Like like no weird shit ever happened with any of us. But I wonder I how many thought, how many scout leaders are queuing on people. Seriously, like. The fact that those guys, like the head of QAnon, is like the the biggest purveyor of child porn in the world. Yeah, I, I didn't Jim know Watkins. That. I, 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 I knew, I knew to, his name. Oh, he is a greasy, was, greasy, yeah, Google dirty that. fuck, dirty, greasy fuck. Makes sense dirty. that there there's that connection because he was he was he's behind Achan, which is right, which is a which is a way of actually being on the internet without being dark tracked. Web. Yeah, dark right. web. Yeah. So yeah. so let me just kind of point this. out. And this is my wondering. I don't have any proof. And you guys are going to get mad at me for saying this. You might. I don't. You know, all the times that these guys launch the word pedo at you, there's so much projection in that. Mm -hmm. And I went through Theo Fleury's tweets over the past week. (sighs) He calls everyone and anyone a pedophile. And for a guy who had the history that he has. Yeah. And knowing the lineage of people that commit those crimes after they've been committed on them. I got to wonder about how many of these people are, this is an offensive move to keep everybody away from their browser history. I do. At I really point, do. At what point do, do we, like, where's the line when it comes to feeling for him and railing against him like because of what he's gone through and i get it he he's not right james james summed it up perfectly ryan um uh james said by just asking should we feel sorry for the guy i i think that just being aware of it ryan is enough i i think he's a little off the deep end um and i i think it's okay If, if he's pushing at you you can push back yeah, because like, he's got such a following, and so many people are buying into his shit that he posts yeah. because he, he's an influential guy that is broken. He's a broken man yeah. speaking Ridiculous. nonsense, but people that looked up to him or people that idolized him as kids growing up, I love Theo, I love Theo, Theo does no wrong. And it's like, but he's you know, done he, some good. I mean, his of course he has absolutely in in Alberta is huge. Uh, He's helped bring a lot of awareness to it and and a lot of money um, support for for that organization. So uh, so, yeah, I I think it's okay to have to to question to question that. But I think it's also okay for Dean to go, "Ah, you know what? It's not okay to to do that to me and to go. after. No. No, he, especially he, the way he attacked put, he attacked Dean pretty good too. And he's that be was put back in his place, I think, right now, uh, and then hopefully maybe uh, um, you know maybe that'll lead to some help for him. He's still cares, fairly young. I don't give two fucks about him. I know, um, I know, you know but if you there's know who one thing, their, whatever. You know who fucked their entire life up more than him, though, <laughs> legitimately, was well, Canada's golden girl, who's all into this, Jamie Saleh. Oh my god! See what she no tweeted kidding. about 19 minutes ago. She was so hot, so cool, and so this funny. one's this one's just odd to me. Finding out that she's, she's as dumb sweetheart. as she is is fucking hard. Her, her like husband, Theo, her husband, like packed up and took off, didn't he? Because she was so Craig Simpson. Well, like, yeah, they were, on, in Canada. they I don't were know. on that Blades of Skates. Yeah, that's where steel. they hooked up. Do you want the story behind that? It's yeah. great. Yeah, so yeah, Blades yeah. of Steel, uh, Blades the figure steel. skating dance show where they take a former NHLer and they put him with a figure skater. Craig Simpson, married, adult kids, gets hooked up with Jamie Saleh. So during the Battle of the Bla- Battle of the Blades is what it's called. We were interviewing Craig Simpson and Jamie Saleh at the time, and they and they would come in and you know every week they tell us how they did. Went back when I was on the air, mm-hmm. and there was something cooking there. Like I, I I I didn't I couldn't figure out what it was. And then uh, the Simpson family, lovely people. I've got no issues with any of them. And I had a, right, a, a nice long guy, chat too. with Christine Simpson about it. And, yeah, they met uh, on uh, Dancing with the Stars or whatever or the fuck it was. Battle of the Blades, fell in love. And it was just this emotional thing. And then, so anyway, she's lost her shit over the past couple of years. And she's turned into one of these Cracker Jacks. And Craig Simpson on that uh, Let's Talk Day, you know, the one that uh, Bell tries to tell you that they own because they're fucking useless that one yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on bell let's talk day he's like this has been the hardest two years of my whole life 
And I finally had to talk to someone this year. And I'm like, let me go check Jamie Sallet's page. And she's like, fuck yeah, truckers. Woo! Oh my God, there we go. <laughs> She might have got in. She might like somebody got into her, right? That, you know, and that's kind of I, it. I, and again, like I, I, I said it before. I, I think, I think it's. Um, I'm surprised at the number of conversations I've I've had recently uh, in the last month about um, it, 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 in and around friends and 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 people that I know, family members that are having real serious struggles with with the pandemic. Um, um, a lot, a lot of like what? Uh, attempted suicides, um, kids having issues. Um, like there's just a lot of, a lot of anxiety and a lot of COVID has really messed some people up. And I think part of that could be your online, somebody, you, you touch base with somebody on a, on a Facebook messenger and you're you not allowed a out of your house. You're getting angry at the government. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a perfect storm. Going, See, yeah. it's a perfect yeah, I get it. storm. It is. Yeah. I get it. I get it. But this is why I go back to I'm my drinking original 48 statement. pack a week now. Are you it's really? supposed to last me too. <laughs> at least that's what I told <laughs> I have been plowing. <laughs> Plowing through. Ask a question about the drinking. Um, do you will you sometimes buy two cases, leave a case in the back of the car, bring in one case, and tell your wife you only got one case, and then when she goes to bed, go up and get the other case, and then hustle it down to the basement and hide it underneath something? Do you ever do that? I don't really want to get into my uh, hiding <laughs> liquor. I just heard a story about Dean's life, formerly. <laughs> That's what we just heard. Is what Dean used to do. Yeah, I totally did. I totally did. <laughs> When I was on the bottles of booze in the, in the I did. Yeah, you had them in the back of the shitter and everything. Oh, dude, I was yeah. I loved booze so much, and I knew, uh, and it was so important to me. That, you didn't want to have those conversations with that, as as Ryan takes a drink. I oh, I've got say. no problem with it. No, um, like you don't like talking about you hiding booze from your wife, go and getting two packs instead of one. I would I would get like two bottles of vodka plus some Southern Comfort plus something else. I would get the one bottle of vodka, put it with the booze, and then I would hide the other bottles. But I would smart right. Because I would be too drunk and wouldn't remember where I put them. This is like five, <laughs> six years ago. I'd put like a beeper or a fake cell phone with them that I could phone and, and activate an alarm so I could go downstairs and find where I hit the booze. Red flag? Not really. <laughs> Who are you calling? I'm not going to judge. I am not going to judge. I, uh, if, there's anything, if there's anything that can be taken away, is it's been a real indictment on the government funding of education and of mental health supports that we've we've seen on full fucking display the last two but years. You know what though, Ryan, I, I get that, and that comes up all the time. But I think I, I think it's important to say this out loud, and and, and this is I, I've tried to take some ownership over where I'm at right now, right, and, and how I've been dealing and interacting with people. And I I think I think it's important to to put some onus. Because we have developed this really, really strong, and I don't know where the hell this comes from. There's this, this, like growing and bothersome increase in the victim society mm-hmm. in the world that we live in right now. And I, I think we need to, you know what? Listen, figure out what you need. The victim class. Have the conversations about. you need to have. It's okay to admit that you might have an issue, but take some fucking ownership. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, was anybody going to get you to lose the weight you needed to lose? Right. No, no. you had to fucking no, do I was, it on yeah, your own. But, but I'm also not somebody that's falling into these things that you're, you're, you're putting a lot of faith in the people that are falling for this shit into being self-driven to, to help themselves. Or just and they're being not there to aware, help. being, yeah, they're being self-aware enough being to go, self-aware. Hey, you know what? Maybe I should right. learn. Like they can't, they, yeah. they're not self-aware. They're fucked. Yeah. God, they're, we need they're, more of that. And is this there is, a way to teach it? Or so this no. brings up, a, and I think it brings up a good question uh, to no. the, the the censorship bill that they keep on screaming about. Do you think social media needs more regulation, or do you think it should just stay the way it is and everybody just figures it out on their own? You know what we never counted on with social media? Uh, no. Like the dumbest of the dumb. We never counted on that. Like we were like, Oh, great way to share information. Great way to network. Great way to show everybody pictures of you at the cottage with your kids. Yeah, that honeymoon's over. Yeah, yeah. Like we never, we never took 
like the dumbest of the dumb. We never took like the grifters into account. We never were like, and David Bowie said it like 30 years ago when they first sit out the internet, he's like, this is going to change a lot of shit. Like it's going to change you. It's going to change me. It's going to change people's emotions, how people act and stuff like that. But I always go back to the same thing. Like, Everybody individually is responsible to invest the time in themselves to become a healthy person, smarter person. And if the idea that we're supposed to evolve as people doesn't sit well with you, 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 don't, you, you don't matter. I mean, yeah. society was based on the idea that culturally speaking, we support each other, help each other move forward. It's really the only thing we can do as a society. And, and over you know, the course of humanity's history in the past few thousand years, that's exactly what we've done. And the weakest people get left behind. What we're seeing are the weakest people who continue to make terrible decisions be legitimately brainwashed, right? Like, and the reason why they've been brainwashed, the Jamie Salles, the Theo Fleury's of the world, all the people that are screaming honk honk in our comment section, which I could give two fucks about. Um, the reason why people are down in racist, Ottawa. Guys. Like, honk it's honky. not funny um, anymore. But it, it's like all of these people are either... They've, they've bought into it because it's familial and it's easier for them to understand or they just can't get away from, you know, that that Jesus portion of their life or uh, they're above this and they're using these people, people like Ben Dichter, who I sent an email to the other day. I know him. He's one of the guys who's in charge of this and announcing that we're going to be suing them and I can't do it yet, but we I am going to sue their dicks off. Um, for call, calling me a pedophile. And I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the process of learning about where Ben Dichter lives and getting his address. Same with Tamara Litch and Chris Barber and Pat King and all those guys. Um, oh, hey, I'll, go, I'll, I'll deliver a summons to Pat well, King. Yeah, He's in my just down the yeah. street. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll no, drive they're around. In, they're the all in Ottawa. She resigned, she yeah, resigned She like resigned from uh, the, the Maverick party, I see. And I have a feeling that's got something to do with... Uh, Going to jail? Me, well, needing to needing to withdraw that money without a political <laughs> affiliation is what it sounds like to me. But I don't She's know. Going to jail. Yeah, We're all going to jail, man. Like eventually. eventually. Th 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 this is I, I called it with every single bad actor so far. It's happened to every one of them. Canada was built too well for this. We're gonna fucking clean the, the streets with these guys, and then they're gonna go away. Then they'll come back from time to time and try and tell us that Justin Trudeau likes little girls and. Uh, there's a pedo superhighway they want to stop. And Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, should be in charge. And the world should be whiter and more Western civilization is better. So uh, that's just what this is. So it's Craig got hilarious. asked on Twitter about his relationship status. So mm -hmm. he responded and he said, uh, we have been separated since June. This is just an eight, 18 hours ago. I am blocked from her account, so not sure what you're referring to, but I am not involved. So he's distancing himself right now from yeah. any conversation that's happening around what Jamie is involved in right now. So I did not know that they were separated, but that wow. that's a recent tweet uh, that, that was, just got sent to me. That was what that that was what I that listen. that tweet was on Let's Talk Day for sure. That was yeah. exactly what it was. It's, he just couldn't. How can you live in that? Like, he's got, I like his call. I, I he's think a he's great one of guy. The better broadcasters too in this country. Yeah. Oh, and he's one of the nicest people you'll ever. I've meet. never like met Craig, him. I, I've heard good great things. guy. Just yeah. Craig is such a salt of the earth. The Simpson family, salt of the earth individuals, just wonderful people. Christine, Craig, their whole family, lovely, lovely. I, I I've met Jamie a couple of times. Just a sweetheart too, right? Yeah, totally. A, yeah. a lot of these. A lot, and here's the thing. Yeah. A lot of these people. If if we're not, if none of this is happening, right? If we don't know anything about how mentally fucked Jamie Soleil and, and Theo Fleury are, if you're in a room with them, I like both of them. Yeah. I, I've met both of them. Yeah, I've Theo's interviewed both of them. Too. I love Theo Fleury and I love engaged. his story. I He's engaged. He wants to help, help. Good thing with Jamie. They're the same kind of people. It's like empaths of the 12th degree are co-opted for this stuff. I don't know what's in Jamie Saleh's past. But you can pretty much point to major, major trauma being the reason that each one of these individuals is so into it. And you can also point to cognitive ability or lack thereof. And you know that, oh, sorry. that's what it is. No, go ahead. No, you know that, um, that, that syndrome where people want to, to be affected by something like, like a handicap or a, like there's that guy that was running around in the wheelchair that wanted to be in the wheelchair, but he, there was nothing wrong with him. 
this this victim class that you always bring up, I think you're right when it comes to this, especially with with middle age or uh, mid, mid, middle middle class middle age white folk yeah. that don't have any sort of thing to really bitch about. There's no oppression. There's no, and they see the attention that. Black Lives Matter get they see the attention that Indigenous matters uh, the, Why things can't like a we real do so- it? no and it's one of those wow if I just cry I'll get attention it, like it's so like is it that simple do you think do you think it's that what it I comes it, down I to I think it's part of it I think it is I think the attention people do get from from the playing the victim I, I don't know about you but I, I'll see this occasionally and I didn't even know there was a term for it until Grant told me. Um, it told me that I did it one day. He called me out for it. And I was being funny when I did it, but it's called vague booking where you're like, Oh, I'm just having the worst day. Yes. Today. And you just leave it and you just <laughs> see just a stream of comments. Yeah. Like it just people just go, Oh my goodness, what's going on, Michelle? Can I help? We should go for coffee soon. Yeah. It's just it's that <laughs> it's that yeah. stuff, right? And and I think that that definitely is part of it. And I, yeah. I, I think Ryan, it's that it's that need for some sort of communication. And and and, and I think that that's part of being self aware. If you need that in your life. Maybe find a more a, a healthier alternative than yeah. than than Go Facebook. Go to a knitting club or something, you know. Yeah, paint nights. I heard those are fun. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never. I Ashley's Ashley's and I we laugh when we go to restaurants and we see these fucking idiots all taking up ten tables with their paint brushes and the husbands are there drinking like just nonstop because they're just not wanting to be there. Oh, but their wives are there. There's they're, always they're, a husband that gets dragged out to paint night. <laughs> I and they're they're painting, guys, they're painting a goat. They're painting a goat or something. All right. Oh, yeah. Right, I boys. don't know. Oh uh, no! Go ahead. Keep going. I got to piss. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Go. Hi. We've got oh. the hold on, Ryan. Have we got the reins? <laughs> it's just us, buddy. <laughs> hold on, but are we supposed to do some uh, feature? Yeah, is we've got uh, honky we've of got the day or something. Or yeah, we've it? got honky of the day. It's going to be a new thing that we're we're going to roll out during the um, this protest until until it's done i guess uh rookie put together some pretty good graphics for it so we're gonna all right we're gonna so roll when that. he gets back from taking a piss we'll definitely uh, i also i also talked to him yesterday i don't know if he caught the end of the show after you left but i ended up breaking in with dean at the end of the show and uh we did some um we did some research on our twitters on everybody on the show on who rated uh where what's the rating the- like what 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 are you basing this decision on so it's it's an algorithm that checks your Twitter. It, it, it analyzes hundreds of your tweets. Like it takes all of your, your your tweets and it analyzes for violations, like things that would violate Twitter rules. It analyzes it for language. It analyzes it for... And um, yeah, I got ours, all of ours back. Sorry, so Dean, I was, did you I was do? vamping did while you were gone. I did the like... entire cast of the show. Everybody okay. here in the show, um, just to find out. So I don't know if they were loaded into the assets, Dean, or not. Well, let's but, do. Um, let, you know, uh, I don't see that, them. Ryan. I have them here. Let, Ryan, let's yeah. wait. Wait till that. Let's do honky of the day. Okay. And then we'll then we'll then let let's we'll close wrap on up. that. We're taking full fucking control of this, Dean. I Thanks, was just going to appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say if and if you want to place bets on over and under who who got where, like I did all of us. I did Karima as well. I did a couple of our uh, our podcasters from the network just for just for fun, just for to see where they would land. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, honky of the day. Yeah. Did we pick one or no? I did. Here's the intro. (laughs) Yes. Time for our honky of the day. This is. I feel like I'm on the locker room. We dress down a degenerate for being one of these idiots. Uh, And this one gives me great pleasure. I've actually had a couple conversations with him over the past year. Uh, Remember, we had uh, we had someone on to talk about him uh, on the show. John Dow. We talked about this individual. Didn't we invite him on? I know who this is now. And he wouldn't come on. Wouldn't come on. But big fan of the protest. Arrested yesterday on. I don't know, fucking 500 different things. Please welcome Jeremy McKenzie, ladies and gentlemen. Yes! Honky of the day. Honky of the day. Honky honk, of the honk. day. 
Uh, this guy got arrested yesterday. Um, he was uh, illegally seen waving a handgun in a reckless manner. He was arrested and faces four firearms charges. Although police didn't identify the accused in a news release, our honky of the day was identified as Jeremy McKenzie, who was in Ottawa for the trucker protest. <laughs> Uh, host of an anti-authority podcast and YouTube channel, McKenzie is a Canadian military veteran who served in Afghanistan. The RCMP alleged a search warrant uh, that he had post-traumatic stress disorder. So they're taking it easy with him, they say. During that search in Nova Scotia, police uh, in January 26 seized five restricted firearms from him, including uh, rifles, handguns, one restricted firearm, prohibited magazines, ammunition, body armor, duty belt with attached holster and magazine pouches and cellular phones. That'll make you feel good, huh? Huh? Uh, wow. In the video, McKenzie refers to Diagonola, the RCMP uh, warrant alleged. It is a Canadian um, fictional country running diagonally from Alaska to Florida. <laughs> These guys are all the same. McKenzie is the creator of the group. Uh, he states that a new country would encompass all the same regions of North America. And what began as a joke broadened into a symbol for his larger community of supporters. Uh, they've embraced his gun or rope phrase for dealing with their enemies and government uh, beyond the violent rhetoric. The cross country network recently began organizing into person groups as they moved to help the trucker fake trucker rally the other day. This is my favorite part of the whole thing. <laughs> McKenzie, when reached for comment, told police, quote, I don't recall any of the events from the video as I was hammered at the time. <laughs> That's his defense. Well, oh shit! I, don't know. I was hammered. He, uh, yeah, he's 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 not he's not healthy, right? Like, and and the guy that we had on as an advocate to try to get our vets help that that yeah. might be in a situation, and he had reached out to um, this Mackenzie more than a couple of times to try to reason with him, him and and suggest that maybe his mm -hmm. current mindset might have something to do with what he's gone through. Um, and it may be having an emotional, you know, an impact on his emotional state of being, but he was Just denying it. Yeah. He sent me a couple ah. of apology notes around Christmas time, by the way. Sorry, I was such a dick. Apologize. Apparently, he just kept hoarding guns and threatening to kill people. So anyway, uh, yeah, Jeremy McKenzie gotta, gotta... is our honky of the day. I like how the intro also works as an extra. It does. It's perfect. <laughs> That's how it was designed that way. Okay, now let's let's get into this Twitter thing. I'm fascinated by. Yeah. I, I bet you I scored really fucking low on this. That's my so, guess. <clears throat> you would think, right? And that's um, <laughs> it, it, there's a site called Bot Sentinel. And that's who does this. And, and that's they they analyze accounts and I did everybody from the show. Now, who do you think has the most so so the, the, the categories are normal, satisfactory, disruptive, and problematic. And it is very generous on its its scoring. So like if you could be an asshole, it's still not gonna make you like it's not gonna red flag you. Who do you think on the show had the highest? Like the um, worst, score like the worst. Account? Yeah, the higher the score, the worse, the worse it is. So. I'm gonna but, say but hold me. On. I, 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 I want to, I want to ask a question. What are they basing the decision on? Your response, your engagement with other people. Hundreds of tweets. Yeah, hundreds of tweets. It analyzes the language in your tweets. It analyzes. It, it's an algorithm that analyzes what you tweet and if you're a like a troll or a bot, and it actually does detect trolls and bots. So. It's it's, Dean, it's. I don't know if you're that bad. I think Dean will be up there. D Dean will be verging on the edge of problematic, is my guess. Okay. And I'm probably right in and around the same conversation. Okay, so I'll give you I'll give you a basis because I know it's kind of hard to do this without without an idea. My Twitter um, was rated at normal at 14 percent, which is in the the normal category next to satisfactory then disruptive and problematic so like that's what that should can't see it. we can't see it's coming. Oh, okay there we go, there we go. yeah 14 percent okay, so perfect. so they analyzed thousands of tweets this was created for ryan lindley you're in the normal twitter category like yours right. is okay. normal okay. you're not disruptive you're not problematic so these and, are scores and, these are scores you get for being on twitter right you are very, and i am you are very problematic actually i am i'm, I'm an asshole on twitter a lot exactly. yeah so 
that's why, again, that's why I say you don't, use, you don't use inflammatory language a lot, right? You're fair. Uh, you try to be. You know what I mean? You're not telling people to fuck off or. I swear a lot on my Twitter, but not not excessively. So Lachlan, you came in at a twelve percent, which is right underneath me. How am I only twelve percent? Okay. All so right, that's normal. Lachlan Cross. That's the first yeah. normal score I've ever got. Can you send that to my mom? <laughs> <laughs> Look, mom, I'm normal. There's James De Fiore. Eighteen percent normal. Got it. Yeah, so he's on the he's on the borderline of normal and satisfactory. He's a bit of, more of an asshole than the rest of us, but he doesn't tweet that much. So what he does say counts, apparently. Okay. Uh -oh. This one sh this one shocked me. This one really shocked me, and that's Bonzi's. Bonzi came in. At a nine percent, he's a good person on Twitter. He's a good boy, but yes. he's listen, Bonzi. I will. Bonzi wants everyone to love him, so he's just right. Like he's constantly looking for for that that affirmation. So yeah, he, there's rookies. He's, he's not. He's not going to fight anybody. Rookie that is rookies rookie. at nine percent. That's nice. Yeah. So rookies. so he's on the same Rook, same. It probably doesn't pick up sarcasm. That's why Rook's doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> and our um, patriarch of the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, came in at a twenty-eight percent. The winner is the normal. This factory. <laughs> he reached the normal to satisfactory uh, line. We're taking That's him right. back now, to his to his uh, to his grade school. That, that sounds like his. That was probably your your report. Twenty-eight. Card. Twenty-eight yeah. is an A plus for me. But satisfactory. So that, an A plus. I went and I did some problematic accounts. I did Randy yeah. Hillier's account just to see what he would come up oh, as. Nice. What do you got? Yeah. Uh, is, it, is there a is there a meter that goes all the way to degenerate drunk old cocksucker? <laughs> Randy came in at a thirty seven percent. Wow, that's right. Okay, yeah. I also did Theo flurries. Speaking of Theo, Theo, uh, Theo came in just under disruptive at forty eight percent. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's just and uh, so now I got a question for you. Who do you think, or sorry, what do you think our friend Karima came in at? Because Karima does a lot of, she does a lot of tweeting. She's oh. disruptive. I would say 57%. Lock. Lock. The thing is, I, I think what this is looking for, it, it, it it's looking for stuff that it can, uh, like, that that's aggressive, just, just need that's a guess. egregious. Just need a guess, right? She's not going to be as high make... as I think. She, we're going to be surprised. I think she think might so, be right? in the teens. I'm going to say, I'm going to say she's in the teens because she's smart. She's she chooses as her words. What do we got there? Five percent. Holy fuck! Yeah, she's Karima smart. blew us all out of the fucking water at a five yeah. percent yeah. because she's so. I'm also going to remind good. her that you had her in the fifties, by the way, fifty percentile. Dean, the next time you on. So now. This morning, Dean and I had a, a, a bout, and I just want to show this for context of, of what it does. Dean and I had a bout with a guy that was calling us out to the bike rack on Twitter today between the two of us. He wanted to fight. He's wanted in Nova Scotia, us. but he wants to fight us in Toronto. So he's coming you know this me, summer. By the way, do you know how many guys threatened to, to meet me somewhere <laughs> for a fight today? I counted 13. 13 <laughs> people on Twitter are like, I'll meet you for a fight. And I'm like, yeah, just go to wherever you want to fight and I'll meet you there tomorrow. Just wait there for me. Yeah, and they're like, I'll be right one there. Guy's like, one guy was like, you're on. <laughs> yes, anyway, we are. So uh, this, so this just just, just Dave, for context, right? obviously you know that the guy's an asshole all the yeah. time on Twitter. He's, yeah. a, he's a troll. So it does. It finds people like that yeah. and makes them, and it, it will actually I, find them. This is a great, what? great program. Ryan, yeah. What's prepares. what's the name of the tool? What's the name of the tool? It's, it's, it's called Bot Sentinel, and you can actually you can actually run your Twitter through this. You, if you download Bot Sentinel onto your phone, there's an iPhone app for it. You can log into Twitter through Bot Sentinel, and it will give you live readings of who you're talking to. So when you're reading tweets, it'll put the score right beside their tweet, so you can actually know right away if the person's a piece of shit or not, or if they're a bot or if they're whatever. It's it's great. It's it's. You I, know I've, what? I've been playing with it all day. <laughs> Awesome. Honestly, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this, and and this is something that I I've been doing because I had to start doing it. A couple of months ago, I, I was uh, I, I'm not I'm not suggesting it was in a bad place, but I was I was I felt like I felt like at the end of my rope. I was mm -hmm. 
anxious. I think they call I that was, a bad place. I, I was short <laughs> with people. I was getting, I was fighting with people on tech or on, on social media. Yeah. And I was just, it wasn't, who's that? That's our show account. Sorry, I forgot oh, okay. that one. Yeah, yeah, show yeah. Our show account does well. Yeah, I know good, we good. we got to get those numbers up. <laughs> but you know what? Honestly, I, I gotta be I gotta be Sorry. honest. I I was causing my own stress online. I, I was part of the problem, and I I made I've made a concerted effort in the last I'd say month, maybe a little bit longer, to take a step back and think about what I'm. If somebody is trying to engage with me from the point of pissing me off, it's just obvious. to do it. You can like just, tell. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it's so blatant. They're just trying to poke you to see if they can get a response. Yep. There's so many people. We all know them. We work with them. They're family members. There's so many people that get up every morning. They're looking for something to be mad about. And if they and if they see your tweet or your name, they might try you. They might have a go at you. And I've yeah. always been a willing participant. <laughs> and I've gotten into it with guys <laughs> for no fucking apparent reason. And it just you know, doesn't make any sense. Like now I'm very careful about how I respond to what are obvious attempts to aggravate me. And right. and I and it has helped. It's worked. And you know what? My Twitter feed, my Facebook, everything is just a little less stressful now. Right. And your engagement probably went that. through the roof, right? It's starting to go up. Yeah. Right? Well, and, and that is like it just we, we had Marianne Iveson on. Uh, she's going to be joining the network. She's a lovely lady uh, talking about how like being in Twitter this week was so depressing. Right. Watching yeah. what's happened in New York City and all that stuff. But she also and, couldn't get out of it. <clears throat> she couldn't yeah, exactly she was like trying to find information she was trying to figure it out and yeah. that's that's what sucks a lot of people into that depression and the ptsd and anxiety and all that stuff is like who's calling me names i don't know what it is well i do know what it is i'm like i know exactly what it is but i i can tell you that it's fascinating to me watching people take things personally on twitter still like i i, I don't understand it I've had death threats. I've had all of it. And all I do is go, oh, I see you from up here, down there, that death threat. I'm going to send that over here. And then, like, uh, th this might come as a shock to you, but I enjoy helping get some of these people into treatment or into a facility that will help them, like a law enforcement facility. And that's what I've been doing for the past <laughs> little while. Did I have something to do with Jeremy? I don't know. We'll find out. But all I can tell you is this, is that, I, I see all of this in binary. It's like fucking content. None of it bugs me. Like zero. There isn't a person out there that can tweet, you pussy, you washed up this, you drunk that, you did this. I, I look at it all and I go, whatever, dude. I've said it all for years, so there's no way that you can hurt me with it. It doesn't bother me. And I think if more people looked at it in terms of like, hey, some guy on a fucking phone somewhere in Canada, maybe in the States, that you will never meet that is mentally yeah. unstable. Wait, like so Dave Theo isn't coming? And Jamie Soleil, Dave, your buddy Dave that wants to, that to fight us at the bike racks, four o'clock. It will never happen. No. And so use that as an opportunity to paint these people as exactly what they are. Pretty hey, easy now, job. I, I just want to throw something out there, and this is just, I, I think, needs to be said out loud, Ryan. I, I, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to jump on you there. No, but no. Dean is has done a lot of work on on himself and and he has gone through some heavy shit in the last five ten years and he is at a really good place right now i want to say this out loud yeah it is okay if you are impacted totally. by the shit on facebook or twitter it, it's 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 fine it is it is 100 percent normal understandable. yeah understandable if somebody's coming at you or or you have anxiety um from from how people are interacting totally. on 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 social media i think the best thing to do is find out what your part in it is and find out how you can um you can unplug to from it, it. Or, or you can at least deal with being a part of it. It's, it's, it, it's on you, right? Yeah. It is okay to, to to flip your Twitter on, 
to see something, see a fight go on, and and have anxiety about that. Dean is a special breed, but that didn't that you didn't wake up one day and go, oh, you know what, I'm not gonna have any oh, problems fuck, with dude. anything. Anymore. I couldn't no, leave my house there. five years ago. Yeah. I was so petrified of someone being mean to me, like legitimately. So I've spent yeah. a lot of time working on it and trying to figure it out, and I read a lot. So you know, see, yeah, I, I I I was the same way, and this was before I started working with the show. I was the same way. I used to I used to engage everybody, especially in the beginning of the pandemic. You engaged everybody on like you guys are idiots, stop being an idiot and this and then you go and find research articles and like put things and then it's like why the fuck am I doing this? They're not listening anyway. So who gives a shit, right? And then I got on this team and Dean says, "Hey, why don't you get on the socials team and take care of the social media stuff?" And I'm like, "Okay." So coming from that background, I get in there and I realized you know, it's not, and, and Dean's right. It's not real life, guys. Like, it's not. Yeah. It's it's such a. It's what people want to portray for you to see. Like, Instagram is the fluffy part of life. Twitter is the arguments. Facebook is the fucking misinformation. Like, it's it's literally whatever somebody puts out there is the version that they want you to see. That's the version they're portraying. It's not real life. It's it's what they want you to see. So, don't get caught up in getting mad getting you know and you're right you it's understandable but take a minute take take a take a step back and realize where you are open the window look outside your neighbor's you're not, not yelling in at your you. phone yeah you're not you're, it's a there's a real world out here i i i go I for a walk a lot because i you get, know i get i get rattled people can you can you can get under my skin really it's, eh? it's pretty fucking easy you're not somebody that i would ever think that would be no. that way dude at all dude we you and i yell at each other weekly for fun and we know that there's an underlying relationship there obviously but i never pinned you for a guy that gave two fucks what you said Never. I get so, I, I get upset about weird shit. I, I, I um it, and it's not I, I get I get wound up about inequality. Like if there's an imbalance, if and that it it just drives me fucking crazy. That's like, why this is so important to me because we're wired the same way. Like I'm yeah. not going to stop my attack on 0.2 percent point. Actually, it's like 0.02 percent of the population that's involved in this thing. I'm not going to turn down the heat. Like, I, I tweeted this today. Um, mandates forever. <laughs> <laughs> not a provocative guy at all, guys, just so you know. Doesn't give doesn't give the social media team a fucking absolute coronary every time he tweets something. We had, like, we had millions of impressions yesterday. We're doing millions again today. And it's because I legitimately am making these guys eat it. And it's my joy. It's my pleasure. Like I, I found I, out a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago that uh, that that we pay for recycling, but they take it all to the dump. I, I can't tell oh. you that drives me <laughs> fucking insane. I'm invested in your story now yeah. because of this. I Unfair. I'm following what's happening with Alberta recycling because of your passion. Oh my I don't God. give a shit. I'm so angry <laughs> about that. Um, Bonzi went and snowblowed all my neighbors' fucking walks, and you hate all your neighbors. I, I wanted to. I wanted to fly to, I wanted to follow Bonzi to Ontario and beat him in front of his fucking family. On his I knew, I knew it. That, I can't tell you that that drove me because those lazy fucking cocksuckers have never done a thing in this neighborhood. And then he goes and goes, Hey, how you doing everybody? Oh, dude, he did it to home. you. He didn't do that for you. He did it he to did you. It totally. <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny. And they're coming out of their houses like they're some kind of saints and going, yeah, Lachlan would never do this. Yeah. Oh, my God. I almost wrecked a car. <laughs> um, speaking of unfair, I got a note from a friend of ours, Rob Gill, uh, who was on the program oh, many times. Yeah, and and this... Rob got uh, beat up yesterday. This is Rob Gill. Oh. today. Um, <clears throat> and uh, he was he's an LGBTQ ad- advocate. Uh, he's a very good friend of ours. He's a journalist. He's a writer. And he needs a little bit of help. So. Um, if you can go to Rob Gill's GoFundMe and if you kind of kindly donate a couple of bucks, if you can, five bucks here, two bucks there, doesn't matter. He's got to get through the next couple of months. 
Uh, and he was beat up in a road raid in, rage incident. He, quote, I was picking up my husband from work in Niagara Falls, turning into his workplace, struck by a very angry man in a Dodge pickup truck. Shocker. After, t- <laughs> after trying to gather his insurance information, he became violent, pu- pushed me into the busy roadway, grabbed my head, and smashed it into the snow-covered pavement. Jesus. I attempted to get up, yelling for help, and he came at me again, striking my face in the side of my head at least three times. I thought he was trying to kill me. He says, I don't know if this was a targeted attack or hate motivated and investigation remains ongoing. So unlike some people, he's not using uh, the victim card or his sexuality to, you know, do. He's saying, hey, listen, I got fucking beat up. He's off work. I spoke with him this morning. He's off work for the next couple of months. So if you could donate and kind of give him a hand. He's self-employed, um, too, is he not? And that's, he is, yeah, and that's, that's why he's got, he has no benefits to help him out. Yeah. So that's why that's why he's doing this. Oh, it's fuck. Such... I didn't know about that. I, yeah. I, uh, it just happened I, uh, yesterday. Yeah. Jesus. I hope he's, uh, he's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Vote number four Rob Gill on Twitter if you want to find him. Uh, they, and it's on all of our socials. We've all retweeted it he's, as well. He's so. a smart guy. I'll, I'll go take a look for that. Yeah. Poor yeah. guy. Yeah. Awesome. That's Thanks, shitty. guys. Appreciate it. Uh, so, Rob, we're with you. I'll call you a little bit later, guys. Thanks for tuning in with us. Uh, Ryan Lindley, Sheeple Shepherd Podcast. Hit subscribe wherever you find it. Uh, Google, iTunes, Apple, it's uh, Spotify, whatever. Uh, and Ryan Lindley on Twitter. Appreciate you being here, brother. And Lachlan Cross, 95.7 Cruise FM in Edmonton. You can listen to him every single morning. It was a good one today, show. Ryan. It was good to Great see one. you today, man. Yeah, it's, I miss it's you my, on this fucking it's, thing. It's, yeah. I, I'm it's every other week I get screwed and I try so hard to get in when I can't but you Tough guys week too because we had like a billion people watch so the show. Fucking mad. You guys did so like you guys were on fire all week. I'm like, these shows are fucking amazing and I'm yeah. sitting here working. My my boring real grown up job. Yeah, we going, had, we had fun. Fuck? This was a good week. Hey? It was I a mean, great week. We kind of but pounded we, on this on this rally a bit, but uh it's the biggest I think story in the fucking world, it. dude. Yeah, yeah, people wanted it's to like hear about it. Yeah, number one with Hannity on Fox News. <laughs> I, uh, I've had to say that, this. That's before. my whole point about that. By the way, sorry, Locke. Uh, the, when is the last time Fox paid this much attention to Canada? Never. There's, there is a fucking. There's something behind this. Yeah, Jesus Christ, their Lord and Jesus, Savior, dude. Jesus and Mike Lindell from My Pillow yeah. are behind. Did you this. hear that? Did you? Did, <laughs> yeah. No word of a lie. Did you hear who's involved in raising money for this? That Old fucking Mike. douchebag, Mike Flynn. And the my pillow dude, Mike Lindell. I'm not Lindell. joking with you. This is from Sandy Batcham. She says, So Mike Flynn's open to go find me for the Canadian convoy, which is blocking the border between the US and Canada. This other guy had my pillow guy with a special who donated eight million to the frozen fund, who paid for hotel these guys paid for hotel rooms. They helped set up the whole thing. Mike Lindell is like right in the middle of it. During the actual fucking domestic terror exercise downtown. Oh hey, hold he, on. He There's offered sixty six percent off for the my pillow. <laughs> So if, if you're if you're a domestic extremist slash terrorist, you could get sixty six percent off with the promo code POSTO at mypillow.ca. That's a good pillow. We had him on our on the locker room there for a while. <laughs> yeah, I know because I asked you because you told me paying, that you he never you paid were, his radio you bills. Pay. <laughs> he didn't pay you for it at all. You no, still- they so he, he, they they run up a bunch of advertising costs and then they just sort of stop calling and. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Crazy. Anyway, we were we had to do these sixty second ads every day, and they were ad lib, and they were both fucking, fucking pillows. It was so painful. <laughs> these things, and people were getting mad. This is right around when Trump got into power, and it became clear that he was like, like a huge Trumper. So people would phone in. They get mad at me when I like. I here I am waxing poetic about this guy's fucking this pillow. This is a great He's pillow. A total Trumper. I mean, the guy that made it is a <laughs> delusional lunatic and former, former crack crackhead. I yeah. do believe <laughs> that if you abuse drugs for a certain period of time, like maybe twenty five years, it has a impact on your mental capacity. You might be onto something there. I think there might be studies. <laughs> I love the, the low-key advice there. Pretty sure if you do coke for 25 years, it affects your mental. Well, no, he was doing it. He was smoking crack, and he was hard. Oh, no, he was, he on was the hooping bite, crack. Man. Yeah, he was hooping crack. He was legitimately yeah. putting cocaine in his asshole at his I worst. have never tried that, but I've heard good things. <laughs> I've heard it's very effective. You know what's huge in Alberta? This is uh, meth. No. Meth? meth? They, yeah, no. They love the meth here. Where's this in Alberta? From? Where's well, the they test from? the water. They go in where's, and they take to test the Where's water. the convoy from? <laughs> it's not from Alberta. It you is. Know, they're all Albertans. Fucking Quebecers in Ottawa yeah, right that's now. That's true. I forgot about yeah. those guys. Yeah. <laughs>
<sighs> anyway. Okay, Lots boys. Laughs. Thanks, boys. I love Mike you guys. Was, love you too. Yeah, Have a great that weekend. That was a good one. We're not yeah, doing a weekend, one. are we? No. Oh, fuck, hey, no. What, if, what if shit yeah, goes off on... Might. Hey, what if shit goes off in Toronto? Are we here? Or? Well, I got a video I want to show you. This just came in. Oh. Because it's like it's starting Breaking now. News. Yeah, it's this is like... Breaking now? This is on University oh, shit, Avenue I'm be on in Toronto. Tomorrow too. Probably, yeah. Uh, three. Yeah. Did you notice? I want to play this for you again. The cops are stopping him. Oh, yeah. The cops aren't letting him near anything, but they're telling him to fuck off. This is fucking awesome. This is I wonder if that's the city of Toronto because we, and I said this last week when they were like, we're going to Toronto next. I'm like, fucking go ahead, but you're going to get that ass whooped, is what's going to (laughs) happen. Like, we had a homeless encampment here. 500 homeless people got their asses kicked by the Toronto cops. Anyway, this is what's going on right now. Uh, Let me turn down the sound so you don't have to fucking listen to it. But the cops have legitimately, that's University Avenue, and they blocked, up, blocked off University at Hospital Row. So people can't go fucking anywhere. Was there a... You, these, these guys are all in, like, farm vehicles. They're like, yeah. hey, what about us? And we're like, fuck, well, who cares? Right. Was, there a, was there a spell, like a spell check error? They said tractor rally instead of trucker rally, and everybody know. showed up? Or what the fuck I is this? Know. Once again, is that these people Karina? are all... Oh, got the barbecue. Oh, barbecue! No. Really? Barbecue out, yes. yeah. I hope this yeah, is right in front safe. of Trinity hope- Church. This is Avenue Road, by the way, in Toronto. So this is just off Avenue in Lawrence, I believe, in on the way down to University, which is uh, not really the financial hub, but getting close to the financial yeah. hub. <laughs> and if you want to piss someone off in the city of Toronto, try and get between them and a meeting that they have to have at Hold 7.30 on, that, in the morning. That was Ottawa. That video was Ottawa? No, no that's that Toronto. Toronto. That's right now. That was taken oh. 25 minutes ago. Yeah. Okay, I was confused. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. Toronto. You can see the when they turn, you'll see the CN Tower in the background there. Well, yeah. Yeah. See, this is fucking awesome. How hard would it have been for the cops in fucking Ottawa to just park a city bus across the street and go what? go fuck yourself, douche and, lords? Uh, they, and they they announced yesterday that today this morning they blocked off University or sorry uh, Hospital Row hospital to row, pr- yeah. to protect it from this. And sure enough, yeah. good thing they did. Yep, they did it. <laughs> wow. Fuck. Fuck All you. right, so I guess we'll Brian, see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> stupid douchebags. Try and fucking... Here, listen, if you're one of these cats and you're one of these stupid douchebags in a truck, try and fucking plant some soy on the highway and see how that goes, douche lord. <laughs> some of your cow corn. Yeah. We need a video farmers. of you going down there, Dean, asking where the chili stand is. Hey, oh. the, is there chili? I heard there's Dean, you doing anything tomorrow? There. I'll come I'm pick you up. To, dude... <laughs> Do you like? Do you have any idea how much I work and how little when I'm not working? I want to go down and hang out with any of these fucking losers. Seriously, honest right. to fuck. All hey, right, dude, maybe we'll go. Like, is this a good time to anybody? Like, does this look like a good time to any <laughs> single no, person on I'll the face of the I'll be in my basement earth? drinking tomorrow. Yeah, it'll yeah. Be tonight. Yeah, and True. you'll be on the show tomorrow. It's at three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Thanks, Love you guys. guys. Good to Love see you too. It. Talk to you soon. Uh, Lachlan Cross. Ryan Lindley and a bunch of trucks. <laughs> you guys. Bizarre. We live in a world with fucking losers. Do, 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 do. And we have to carry them around like a skin tag. That's what we do. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Got a new camera for tomorrow's show. Thanks to Justin, Amanda, everybody. Uh, thanks to you for listening. Don't be scared of these kumquats. <laughs> They're literally doing the work of QAnon, and they have no idea. And we got this. Have a great day. Thanks so much for being here. Don't forget, you can uh, find us at DeanBlundell.com. Thanks to our sponsors and friends at Easy Auto Financial, uh, making it super easy for people to get into vehicles, vehicles that they love. And uh, if your credit rating sucks, don't worry about it. This is what they do. EasyAutoFinancial.ca. Check them out today. No obligation. Go and sign up right now for free financing, and they'll send you to find the car you want. EasyAutoFinancial.ca. Domination.com. Clients of ours, friends of ours, Adam and the group are fucking geniuses so they developed ai for people that produce content that want to make a whole bunch of different legacy stuff promos etc for one file takes 72 pieces i think it takes like five minutes seven minutes maybe max it's unbelievable try them today 
domination.com. Dominate with your content. Go to dmntn.com and try them for free today. And of course, Ed's Fine Imports is Gitch. G-I-T-C-H. Ed's Gitch is the best Gitch. And uh, it's Canadian made underwear. Right now, if you order three, you'll get the fourth for free if you use promo code Gitch and then the number three. Super simple to do as well. We make things easy here. That's what we do. Uh, have a great day and an awesome weekend, everybody. Uh, we really enjoyed doing this this week, and we'll be back again probably tomorrow around 3 o'clock to cover these uh, hosers in Toronto, eh? Look at my tractor. I got a tractor. No one gives a shit about your tractor, especially in Toronto. They'll look at that tractor and wonder where the circus is. Ottawa still. It's a fucking circus, isn't it? I love it, too. Stuff never stops. People are still people. Just be happy you're not them. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye.